is up, bros and hoes. It's Asher Optic Midnight, and I'm back today with another episode of Power Down. Me and Amanda the Jedi, my co-host. I would no, you're not my co-host. We are each other's co-hosts. We're co-hosts. Of the, yeah, we, we are co-hosts. This is we co-host this podcast. Yes, we are what you see as soon as you walk into Applebee's. Me and Amanda the Jedi just sitting there, host a scene, powered down. Totally. Yep. I dig that. I dig that. You know what else I dig? She told me to bring it up. I so we do this like clap thing before we start the the, the podcast, right? The to audio. sync the audio, right? Yeah. And I said, "Wow, it's a good thing I can clap, and I don't have the clap." And I was like, "I should put that on a shirt." And Amanda's like, "You need to repeat that." Yes. When we exactly. start recording, now I'm now yeah. that I have, I regret hard. it a little. Nope, we're good to go. That sounds I great to me. <laughs> Would you wear that shirt? Uh, yeah. You would not. Because it lets bro. people know what I'm all about. <laughs> it lets I swear, I'm literally, know. I'm literally, I'm getting shirts made that say Titty City on them. Yes, you like, are, t- bro. T- you did it like. T-I-D-D-Y. T-I-D-D-Y. S-I-D-D-Y. Yeah. Because bro, I am fucking copying that. Good. Yeah. They're going to go out. There'll be a bunch of different colors. But I basically, somebody decided they were going to try to roast me in my, in my comment section. Wait, was this is, yeah. Tell me the origin. Then it was like okay, I gotta Wait, go no, find I a comment. No, I did see that now. you put like, on Twitter. Of Titty City. That was his screen name, right? Oh yeah, was he the one who said I looked like the undead Cobain? I think so. There was a couple. Yeah, of he said you looked tired or something. No, he said I looked like a bin not not undead, a bin dead Kurt Cobain. Hang on, Mayor of Titty City. And then I decided I was gonna make a shirt because like if somebody like make money off the people who insult. I mean, you. who doesn't want to go to Titty City? Exactly. So I said, feel it, like even gay men and straight chicks could appreciate Titty City. <laughs> titty City. Uh, would it kill you to look presentable and put on some makeup instead of looking like a bin dead Kurt Cobain? <laughs> a bin dead? So for those of you who don't know, Kurt Cobain, lead singer of Nirvana. One of the greatest bands of all time ever. He's been dead for 24 years. Well, to be years. fair, I don't understand because he actually blew his head off and you don't look like that at all, so... Um, it's not right. I've also frequently get, and I hate saying it out loud because if I say it out loud, people will be like, "I see it." Young Axl Rose. It's the cheekbones and the hair. Look up as long as, long as I don't look Hold like on. old Axl Rose, I'm fine Hold with on. it. No, specifically, you got to look up Young Axl, Rose, and it's like the hair and the cheekbones because we've got like young. We've Axl got the blue Rose. steel, like the. We're not like other podcasts, so we don't have you know. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hold on. Anytime. I'm gonna put this up on the screen for those of you that can Do watch. It. Do it. Which Appar- one is it? All right, Amanda. Like- it's the one where he's got like a bandana. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yo, like- Yo, pose. Hang on. Is it like the? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, I it's see it, bro. It's the cheeks. It's the it's cheeks. The cheeks. You have nice color. cheekbones. Thank you. Solid. And apparently, he did when he was younger. But as long as it, like old Axl Rose. Is a whole different story. He looks like a failed clown or something. Well, maybe so he did some have, drugs. Yeah. Anytime I have a video that does better than normal. So, like, if I have a video that reaches far outside my usual grasp, yeah, like, which like, seems like to happen, like, one, yeah, like, once every couple months this will happen, at least one person says, like, yo, who the fuck invited young Axl Rose? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Go Take away. me down to Titty City where the grass is <laughs> green in the girls. Bro, Titty City population, me. I'm buying that shirt. I think no, like seriously. I need to come out with funny merch, bro. You I'm, do. I I need to get my merch back up. I feel like I, it. I have you promised ideas. me a hoodie. And you said you were gonna get me one because you were getting new merch and then it never happened. Yeah, it never happened. Uh it'll happen. I'm like hashtag never happened so far this year. I need to get my shit together because I have so much shit I wanna do. I'm just not, not executing it, except for the gym, which we're going to talk the about later. Gym. The first we thing are. I want to get out of the way, I guess, uh, is the Avengers movie. So this might be the first time this has happened. Amanda went and saw a major release, and then I went and saw a major release the day it came yeah. out. No. So, like, no? You saw it the day after me. I saw it Friday. You saw it, I guess, when it came out? Yeah. No, because, like, it, it was out in Australia on, like, Tuesday, which would have been Wednesday for them, Wednesday in the UK. Dude, and you would have been able to have seen it Thursday night. Whatever happened to a good old fashioned Friday release? For so a movie? in the UK and overseas, they have to start releasing them there earlier, and in like um, South America and stuff, because if it comes out in the US first, the um, pirates get to them too quickly, and they get put on the internet, and it can cut ticket sales in half. 
So a lot of the time, so it, like it hasn't been released in China yet, but I remember that I, the first Iron Man movie, or like the second Iron Man movie or something came out like, like ridiculously early in South America. And it was literally because they said the piracy is so bad there that they have to release it ahead of time. Otherwise That's it crazy. won't make ticket sales there. Here it's just because they keep bumping them back um, to make, I don't know, because then they can say they have a bigger opening weekend. Not that this needed any help having a bigger opening weekend, but it's honestly my favorite thing. Because they used to do Thursday f at midnight releases, yeah, but now it's like been that. bumped back earlier. So it's like bro, 7 it's, p.m. I'm in it and I'm awesome. I'm home by midnight. Bro, it's like Black Friday is turning into Black Thursday. turning into Thanksgiving. But I'm cool with it. But I'm cool with it. I think it's I'm like, whack. Yes. No, I like it because I like then a you hard have to start time for everybody. No, nah, because then I have to fight with too many people. What do like, you mean fight? Who are you fighting, Amanda? Just, okay, actually, <laughs> the movie theaters in my town are like. Bro, the I size. literally love when you talk about movie theaters. Go. They're like this. It's smaller than the optic offices. Damn, roasted. Like, well, it's just that one room, like where people, yeah. like with you, yeah, just that one long, like, like a that small one auditorium. Long, it's a very small auditorium. Like my high school had a bigger auditorium. So like, well, I guess that's pretty standard, but I had a, I was from a small town, but it, it's tiny. So I actually drive out of town to go see major releases because oh, yeah. I can reserve my like seat. Two hours, right? Yeah. It's about like an hour and a half to two hours You're and wild. it's, but it's worth it. It's like my parents hometown. So if I get tired, I can just stay there overnight and whatever. True. But and you see your to friends me, it's worth it. And all that. See my friends, go get some good food, have reserved seating. So I can literally, movie starts at seven. I walk in at 6.55. I'm in my cushy seat that's comfortable mm. with perfect view. Instead of <laughs> fighting for like three hours to get a shitty yeah, seat. Yeah, like wait in line. And I'm looking at like a, the, the a screen the size of the wall that I'm looking at right now. Like it ain't fucking worth it. Especially not for something like Avengers. You remember... Having to wait in line at midnight release before, yes. like when it was free for all. Yes, and I was always I, I. There was a few times where I was first in line, and I got addicted to it, and I have a problem now. Yeah, I could see you. I you would definitely be a person <laughs> that would like bring one of those camper chairs or whatever, and like sit there, like yeah, I like possibly I, like, by yourself, maybe with other people, usually with somebody. You're um, reading like on, the Harry Potter book or the movie you're yes. about to see. Yes, I've done that. Yes, I know. I've been that person. I definitely um, could sense it from I, you. I went, to, I went to go see it again on Sunday. and You saw there, it twice it was, already? Yeah, I've already seen it twice. Oh so my like, god. Yeah. So I'm like waiting in the line. And uh, it was like weird because there was like a 2D showing and a 3D showing within 20 minutes of each other. So everybody was just waiting in the same line. Screw because 3D the movie theater, movies, bro. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So I hate I'm 3D. Fine with yeah, so I, we were waiting to get into the 2D one. So they, they were once they started opening the gates to the movie theater, because it was the first showing of the day, they started ripping tickets. And, like, everybody else is doing, like, a nice orderly kind of, like, walk and moseying, trying to figure out where they're going. And I'm like, Auditorium 8? I'm like, gone. Like, my friends are like, where did she go? And I'm like, they get in there. And I'm like, I'm, like, putting my jacket on chair. Like, I got it. Nice. <laughs> Bro, you are a savage. I could see it, too. Like... You get, like you would probably get like all hyper focused on it and like I do. Uh, everybody. So I feel funny. like everybody has like an anxiety neuroticism. Oh, I think for sure. the movies. It's yeah. the movies. If I'm alone, I know that you know I can probably find a pretty decent seat. But if there's other people around, I'm like, we need to coordinate. Yeah. Yeah. That's like crazy. I unintentionally, they think I'm weird there sometimes. I unintentionally showed up like two hours early for Ready Player One because. Uh, <laughs> I basically I finished work at like five. The movie was at seven, so I went downtown to get food, and then like I live like twenty minutes away from the movie theater. So and like then there would have been like rush hour traffic. So I was like, yeah, you didn't want to like go up to the mall and wait. And I was like, I don't know what to expect. Like this is the opening night of a movie. It could be really busy, but it was weird because it was a Wednesday night because of a holiday. Oh, and shit. I was just kind of sitting there eating and they were like, what are you here to like see? And I was like, oh, Ready Player? I know it's not for a while. And I was just chilling. I had like a book and my <laughs> like, iPad. What is this and I was chick just... doing? And then eventually they were just like, you can like, you can go in there. We cleaned it. Like the ending of Romeo <laughs> and Juliet's playing, but like everybody's gone. So like, if you just want to sit for the credits, you can just, you can chill. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. It's so Don't bad. Don't look at me. Don't yeah, look I'm me. that person. But Avengers. Nothing but respect. Yeah. Avengers. Okay. So first of all, if you guys don't, we're not going to spoil anything about Avengers, but if you're one of those no. people that doesn't like to hear about it, regardless if they're spoilers or not, I will put timestamps in the description so you will know when we are done talking about this. But if you Keep have seen the movie or 
You're just interested, maybe. I don't. If she you're wants, that interested, I don't know why you haven't gone and seen it yet. Because some people can't. Some people are kids; they have to wait on their parents. Some people are like teenagers, True. and so a lot of people are on their exams right now. True. So it's, been, it's actually been sold out in a lot of cities. People are just like, "Oh, I'm gonna get tickets tonight." It's like sold out. I'll get tickets for tomorrow. Yeah, sold out. We had to go like hella <laughs> early Friday because that was probably the best choice. Yeah, honestly. like all all the tickets were sold out, and there was like seven of us that went. I went with a bunch of the yeah. optic dudes. It was hella. Yeah. I think if fun. I had. I would I guess I would have went and seen it with a girl would be the only other way I would have got into the theater to see that movie hey um it's good though it's good though <laughs> it's, it's amazing. amazing it's an it amazing is a good movie. movie so but going with a group was amazing and I was sat next to Davis and you know Davis he like I do. he I don't I shouldn't say he laughs easily but he definitely like has a good sense of humor he's a very easygoing sense of humor his yeah. laugh is hilarious yes. and like okay Get, get, I'm actually. I have his his and Sam's laugh now. That like. <laughs> oh, I do like, that now. <laughs> like yeah, like, I start yeah. doing that sometimes now, and it's their fault. You just bust out laughing. Yeah, I do. It's hilarious. He, he's hilarious, and so like, I okay. So here's my yeah. background. I've never seen an Avengers movie. I don't particularly fucks with Marvel movies because. I think they're corny. I see the trailers. I see the lame jokes. I'm like, wow, it's not my vibe. Have you seen the trailers for Justice League, Ashley? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a Justice League fan either. I heard that movie was trash. I'm not. It a, matter. That's DC. Yeah, I know, but like, I'm not a Marvel versus DC person. I can't stand when people do that. I'm. I'm just a movie you person. Just said, you right? Just what I just said because they make corny ass jokes, bro. Yeah, and but works for them. I don't know if it was because I sat next to Davis or what, but I thought pretty much like some of the jokes were corny, but most of them actually did genuinely make me laugh, or they were funny, or they were just cute little nods to things that even me as a very casual Marvel fan could understand what they're or hinting at Guardians or saying. Fan. Yeah, yeah I'm a, so the Marvel movies I have seen: Deadpool. I know it doesn't count or whatever. Um, yes. Guardians of the Galaxy one and two. Uh, why can't I think of it? Wakanda. Black, Black Panther. Panther. Yeah, that one. I've seen that one. Mm -hmm. And it seems like I'm kind of starting to like get into them just because, like, I don't know, they're just major releases and I think they're pretty dope okay. movies. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think it's getting to the point where maybe what you, the issues you have with what you think superhero movies are, are kind of going out the window because they are just good movies. Right. I, like, I like appreciate a good movie. And I think, like, yeah. I never got into Iron Man. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd only seen like the first one on mute pretty much. <laughs> I just, I just find superhero movies to be very predictable. Yeah, his is like the one that I would say that Iron, the first Iron Man is like probably one of the, not necessarily the least predictable, but one of the least predictable and not at all like corny. It was like literally just like completely different from anything that had ever come out at the time. And that's why it did so well. And then paired with the fact that Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Like yeah. their personality is just, a boss. it works. I like him. So, and I don't think that movie would have done half as well if it had been somebody else playing that role. You know who I still don't like, though, and who I still think is corny as fuck? Please don't do this to me, I'm not going to say Spider-Man. I'm not going to say Spider-Man because he's young. He's Maybe he should be corny. But I don't like Captain America. That dude is corny. He doesn't offer anything unique. He's just a guy. He's a vanilla superhero, and I don't fucks with him. But I fucks okay. with, you know who my That's favorite right. guy is? Star-Lord. Star-Lord. Yeah, Star-Lord's great. I love Star-Lord. Star I love the Guardians. Guardians See was like way better than I thought it was gonna be. Like I will, I will love it, Bradley and I love Cooper. it. Yeah, no, I love it. That's I honestly boyfriend. love Guardians so much, and I wasn't ever a huge Captain America fan, and I'm still not. Like he's not my favorite Avenger. He has some of the corny, best movies, right? but other than that, it's like he's got some of the best movies because this is at least uh, Captain America two and Captain America three are kind of like mini Avengers <clears> movies. <throat> like there's other characters involved, and it's like the bigger story that's really cool, especially in Sil Civil War. But and then I yeah, went I need back to see that time. one. You do. It's actually really good. Um, that's and I went back I and I watched the first Captain America when I was traveling back from wherever I was last. I don't even remember anymore. Mexico. Um, and, you know, it's like one of my viewers, because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I know you don't like Spider-Man, but I love Spider-Man. said that he doesn't like Spider-Man <laughs> for the same reasons, but, he, but then he said that he likes Captain America for the same reasons why I like Spider-Man, is that, like, no matter what's happening, Spider-Man is going to jump in and try to save the day. It doesn't matter if something is, like, a, like, freaking Kraken is fighting out of the sea and destroying people and the Hulk has been ripped in half. 
Peter Parker is he's, still going to swing in there. He's going to try to he's going to try to save people. He's going to try to help the day. Like, he's a good good kid, good kid, Ashley. And then somebody's like, that's basically Captain America. Like the whole the ongoing joke in Captain America movies is that he keeps getting hit the shit kicked out of him, and then he just gets up and he's all like, "It's all G, dude. I, I can do this all day." So he is actually. If you saw the first Avengers movie, they they give him some moments. It's a little bit better. He's just kind of like he's like the Boy Scout, basically. But that's it's, it's weird. Fucks with him. It's interesting because like oh, that's what I mean. There's I'm like you know what I prefer Tony Stark as a character. I prefer Iron Man as like in terms of like you know he's cool. I like everything he does. But then when you have situations where the two of them disagree, I always agree with whatever Cap says. I'm like I understand why Cap is the way he is, and if I was in that position. I'd probably be on his side, even though I prefer Tony Stark. I just think he's a, I don't know, he's a better, he's a more, he's a funnier character. I freaks with Tony Stark. I don't know. Yeah, I really you should watch the first Iron Man. No, I'm going to. Like, oh, so I'm going to, no, yeah. I don't want to watch that. So I think I could watch the other Avengers movies for sure. And maybe like a couple of the like singular hero movies. Like I heard Ragnarok yeah. is super Ragnarok's good. Ragnarok's amazing. I actually just rewatched the first Thor. It's not as bad as I remember it being, but the third one is like leaps and bounds ahead. The second Avengers is not that great. It's good, but it's Damn, not like scary. amazing. The first one was like, oh, I didn't so think bad. I was going to like the first Avengers movie. And I loved it. I was like, holy crap, that was amazing. Like, how did they do that? And now it's like, we're seeing that again. It's like all over again with this one. You know, I was amazed when they managed to make the first Avengers work with all those characters, juggling them around, letting them have enough screen time. And then we have this one where they still There's managed so to do that. There's so many, bro. I, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know like a lot of, I didn't know Vision. I didn't know Vision's That's boo fine. thing. I didn't know like. <laughs> those were all basically. I didn't know the bow and arrow guy, the guy with the no arm or something. Whatever his fucking. Oh, so you, yeah. Okay. So those, what bow and arrow guy? Isn't Hawkeye's there? not in this one. But the whatever guy had his arm off. Oh yeah, okay. Winter Soldier. Yeah, He's never, heard, never even heard of that guy. Yeah, but, so you, yeah. Like I know, fine. obviously the Hulk. Like I grew up in the nineties. Okay. Yeah, you so know, I you know, know the main like, people. Main people, but... and I really liked how much the Guardians were in it. They needed to be in it a lot. Like it was, it was <clears> definitely <throat> apparent that they were going to be in it quite a bit based on you know what the storyline was so i liked it though that. i really genuinely enjoyed it i good. i think part of the reason is i love a good superhero movie that has a good villain and i thought thanos was a yes. great villain i've always said that while i can enjoy the journey of a superhero movie a lot of the times it's that ending conclusion that stops it from being great or just where i kind of like fizzle out on it like yeah. so for example the first iron man movie is amazing all the way through but then like it gets to the end and you're like kind of a forgettable boss battle but the movie leading into that is amazing um same thing with guardians like you know like the first that boss is not necessarily like wh that where do you crazy. sympathize there where yeah. do you sympathize there but then you have characters like loki you have characters like thanos you have characters like kill killmonger uh, magnetos like those are amazing villains because you can understand where they're coming from or they have some kind of likable quality so like loki is kind of like a he's a line bender like, sometimes he's helpful sometimes he's not um and then you have like if you can figure out what some of these motives are and understand why they have those motives it's better than just that i'm destroying the world for no reason that's why i struggle with spider-man movies bro all of the villains in spider-man are whack what do you mean? Whack. Homecoming? Okay, for a while, you have not seen Homecoming. Okay, yeah, so I haven't seen like Homecoming, that. but... Venom? How is Venom whack? Venom's not whack. That's a Spider-Man villain. But, like, Spider-Man's whack. Oh, he's not! Yeah, he is. No, he's not. And also, the Homecoming villain is not whack. You can understand why he's doing what he's doing, and you can understand why Spider-Man... You just can't keep doing it. You know what I didn't understand? Wait, can I... If I say what Thanos did or wanted to do, is that a spoiler? To some people, not it's okay if you're familiar with the comic books, you know. Actually, no, because if you've seen the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, you know exactly what Thanos wants to do. Why does he want to wipe out half of the population? They very explicitly explain that because of resources. Well, now we Why are getting is it into only spoilers. We are actually getting guy. into spoilers now. We are actually now getting right. into spoilers. Because Never mind. Now it's like, but I couldn't I fully like... grasp why this one guy wants. I can explain it to you later. Okay, cool. Cause like, okay. it's a comp. It's a combination thing. Thanos also has like a god com Titan, but he wants to be a god. Damn. And he's not. Damn. Fan. Like he's really strong. He's really powerful. And obviously, like every time he gets like 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 every the whole storyline with getting the gauntlet stones that automatically, if you can wield them, makes you stronger. 
that's why it's like humans wouldn't be able to like hold yeah. one of those stones. Yeah. You know? Like he needs um, the thing. Yeah. I didn't like his chin. Uh, no, no, you really did. But at it least makes he's me uncomfortable. Is, the reason why I'm okay with the chin is because they acknowledge the chin is weird and they make jokes yeah. about it. So like, it's fine. His ball sack chin. Drama. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> exactly. Grimace. It's great. Nasty. Um, yeah, so like, you know. Overall, yeah. though, I gave it like a solid four or five out of five stars. Yeah, me, it's like a 10 out of 10. At worst, a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Damn. Like, it was good. Me, that was like, and I don't even like good. those movies. So if I say it's good, it's a good movie. It's a great. Like I've only seen like there's a couple people who said they don't like certain things about it or didn't like it. I had to like argue with somebody about something for a while. Oh yeah, speaking of which, if you guys have seen the movie and you want to like discuss it more, I have a review on my channel. I have two. I have a spoiler free review and I have a spoiler filled review and discussion. If you want to come over there and yes, chat. go over to Amanda the Jedi's channel. She does. Yes, she does channel. like film reviews actually pretty often. And she'll yeah, do I like do, yeah. two versions. I really enjoyed your spoiler version and it was like 15 minutes long, but it did not feel like 15 minutes long. Thank you. Like That's when you were talking actually, about it, because yeah, like I had to edit it down from 20. Yeah. Well. Yeah. She she had a little cry, you know, just a I had little, a little cry. Just had a little cry. I had, I had to cut, cut that out. You know, if the movie's like two hours, 20 minutes long, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Well, and like you so. even forgot to do like the end credit thing, which is what I, I wanted know. to hear you talk about the most. <laughs> I was like, I who I the fuck is, like, I don't know. Okay, no spoilers. Yeah. Can't, definitely no spoilers. can't spoil the end credit thing because that's awesome. But I wish maybe at the end we can set aside like a few minutes to talk like specifically big spoiler stuff. Like theories. Yeah, like if we just want to do that at the end after we do some of the advice or something, and then people can just we can just be like, this is where it ends if you haven't seen Infinity War, but if you want to keep going, we'll have like a little, I'm so, down so with people that. know. I'm okay, down cool. with that. Okay, I'm let's tie this. That. Let's tie this together. So, Avengers, your channel, yeah. mm -hmm. and something I want to talk about working out. All just kind of fix. It. Oh, by the way, this is the non Avengers part. You've passed it now, so welcome back it. to the podcast. Welcome back, yeah, beautiful listener. Okay, yeah. Um, so explain to me because you like tweeted out like I want to do a like a workout series, and I was like lit. If you guys don't yeah. know, Amanda works at the YMCA. A gym, the YMCA. Yeah, I was gonna say a gym. You could just say a gym. I talk about it enough. Yeah, <laughs> everybody should know that it's y the Y specifically. But yeah, yeah she's a, thing, you're a yeah. certified physical trainer. Is that? I'm a pr yeah. I'm certified through the Y. Through the Y. So, so like you YMCA. couldn't just like go to another gym and be like, sup. Probably not. Like, they might. If I was like, yeah, I'm certified through the Y, they'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, it would depend on the gym. Um, right. But it's kind of weird. So I started working at the YMCA when I was, like, at the height of my, like, I was, like, powerlifting. I was, like, thinking about doing Damn, competitions. Bro, doing, like, I was, power like, power lifts and shit. Yeah, I still do that, but, like, not as much. Like, but I was, like, lifts? at the height of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love deadlifts. Deadlifts are actually, like, my favorite movement. Um, but I was, like, <laughs> trying to bring up squats. And now it's got to the point where I'm, like, you know what? I'm really tall. I have long legs. Squats suck. I don't want to do them. I'm just going to do like tall, split squats. Though. My legs. I'm all oh, leg. Oh, your legs. Yeah, you are all leg. I'm all That's leg. And that fact. makes squats hard. And I'm very like flexible. So like it's sometimes it's really hard for me to get the tension back in my legs to push up heavy weight. So I can do squats really well, but I hate them. So I stopped doing them you as need much. some so tree like, stumps like me, dude. <laughs> there you go. Give me some of your legs, That's please, the thing. bro. No, like my legs will grow in muscle mass, but not be able to push up more weight for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a mental thing, but I could never do it. Could never get past certain plateaus. Well, but a deadlift meanwhile, my is deadlifts much would more go than up. just your legs, right? Yeah, well, my yeah, deadlifts is fine. I don't plateau with deadlifts. Deadlifts is mostly, it's like, it's lower back stability and then your hamstrings and your glutes is what you're supposed to drive with for deadlifts. So I can, I could deadlift like twice my body weight probably not right now i'd be scared to try that um and i could bench press a little bit more than what i weigh which is actually really impressive because i'm not very big up here but could not get my squat above like 65 pounds damn so, like that's, that's not normal squat, right that's low especially yeah. for like i think no i've done that probably it's just like the it's the 45s with two 10 pound 10 pound plates on each side yeah like it's not heavy but I'm trying, I'm getting better. But either way, because I kind of got out of my fitness groove, because honestly, working at a gym like that, at least, makes it really hard to work out because you don't well, want to yeah. be there when you're not working. Well, you yeah. don't want to be there when you're not working. Um, you can't like, depending on when I was working at the bigger gym, you couldn't work out while you were working. And if you tried to work out when you were done working, people assumed you were still working. So you either got told on, people would like go around snitching. Like, oh, and I'd she's, be, like, using, she's still clogged in working out. 
Yeah, no, not like members would be like, you shouldn't what? be using the equipment, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm Yo, not even working anymore. Screw snitches. Yeah, no, like there's, there's so, like it's weird. It's one of these things, there's some people you can't be happy with. Sometimes if, you, okay, if you're circling the gym, cleaning things up, you're in the way, you shouldn't be on the floor. Oh, you're just sitting at a desk. Why are you just sitting at a desk? Oh, you're, you're, tr you're using the equipment. You shouldn't be doing that. Oh, you're personal training somebody on the equipment that I want to use. You shouldn't be like, you, there's some people you can't keep happy. Can't so it just got to the point that I, yeah, I never wanted to be there. And like now when I work, it's like really early in the morning. So it was hard to get like the motivation to, to exercise. But I started back up probably like, um, I'd say like a month ago, I kind of started at like a moderate pace doing like stuff that I would <laughs> normally do and just like full body exercises like three times a week. But then I decided that it would be kind of cool if I did the Avengers workout programs, which is finding the workout programs that all the actors did when they were training for those roles. Sometimes they have like really specific stuff that they actually talk to the actors and actresses about. Sometimes it's stuff that they're like, based on videos we've seen of them training, this is what we think they probably do. But a lot of it's like, this is what I do day one. This is what I do day two, alternate. Um, pick five of these exercises this day, five of these ones, do them X amount of days a week, stuff like that. So I thought it would be fun to just kind of go through them. And in a way, it's really interesting because they might throw in stuff that I don't do a lot. So I don't really do push-ups um so i'm not a fan of them uh i don't do a Fuck lot of like push-ups pull -ups. yeah exactly but like so i did like <laughs> so i have a video going up today so it would have been yesterday um that i did i did captain america's first just because he's got like a four-day split i figured it'd be pretty easy just to start with one of his one day so you go like, over the whole you're gonna go over all of the days or just be like this what is what I, captain america does day one yeah, this is yeah i'm gonna say this is what captain america does for like upper body and then i'll probably switch to somebody else and i'll get back and do day two of Captain America or something, as long as I feel like I'm getting like a well-rounded, because even though it was mostly upper body, he still had like one lower body. He had like a squat type exercise in that day. So like, yeah. Dude, you're going to look like Captain America. But I'm going to do Black Widows too. Black Widows is like super like cardio and body weight, like based. I need that. Bro. So yeah, it's like a lot of like speed lunges and reverse lunges and she has a lot of stuff. She apparently, for like the first Avengers movie, she had like five weeks to prepare. Damn. So it was like six days a week. It was like alternating two days back and forth, six days a week with like one day of rest. Yeah, I'm going to need that one because that yeah, is in line with what I am doing right now. I used to do six days a week. I used to do a push-pull oh. legs routine. So I do push-pull legs, day off, push-pull legs, day off, push-pull legs, day off. I don't know that was what, I did. what that means. But so push is like bench press uh, and like triceps and stuff. And then like pull would be back and biceps and legs is just like, and then I'd probably do core on legs day too. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to need you to like pulling motion. some shit for me, bro, because yeah, can I, can I, can I just, can I sound dumb? I've mm -hmm. sounded dumb on the podcast before about workout and fitness. Yeah. Number one, the juice cleanse. Number two, yep. like my misunderstanding of like I, I had to do a ton of reading like the last like a week or two ago because I was confused even still. Like how do you mm. – if I'm going to weight train, how do I burn fat? Can fat turn into muscle or fat just has to – old fashioned – Okay, this is, fat does not turn into muscle, but you, you can lose fat while gaining muscle. So you can basically as you're but burning how? fat – because you're burning fat, but then you're building muscle. It's not like the the fat in your body is not turning into muscle. It's just that you're, well, no, it's, you're fat exerting. is like an energy reserve. Yeah, right? so you're exerting yourself, and like basically, um, any kind of energy that you expend can result in weight loss and can result in burning fat because you're using energy stores and you're using, you know, you're but exerting yourself. Muscle is built with protein and not fat. Or energy. It's built with protein, right? I don't know. Yeah, this so is why I like I had to research yeah, it because listen. like my thing okay, is, actually, is like if I want to build muscle, if you want to yeah. build muscle, you need to eat extra calories, more than your body burns, right? But in order to lose fat or to lose weight, you need to eat less calories than your body burns. It's simple, right? It's what you're putting in. It's like there's it's a bunch of stuff for like for what you're looking for, you should still be eating at like a deficit, but make sure that you are eating protein, making sure that you right, get like your protein. high protein, low carb. Yeah, it's fat. Yeah, it's like more what you're putting in your body versus like how much of it. As long as like there's there's entire calculators out there. You say like this is what my so you put that your lifestyle is sedentary. You spend we we you play video games. That's what you spend most of your time doing is streaming, editing videos, like you're sitting a lot. 
So I mean, unless I go to the gym, though. Like, I've been going no, to the gym like count. crazy. That no, that's different. The gym doesn't so count. You're... No, wait a second. I'm explaining. Bro, what? Okay. Your lifestyle regular is less. Okay, so say, um, so compare. So you, gamer, um, somebody who is a construction worker, somebody who is a Walmart employee. So you sitting on your butt, which right. is nothing wrong with. I'm sitting on my butt. Walmart worker, probably standing, occasionally walking around. Construction worker, a lot of physical labor. So right. you put you basically so you'd put that your average life is sedentary. Somebody else would put like moderate like the construction guy would probably put like active to moderate exertion. And then after that, you put in the fact that you exercise. How many times a day do you exercise and how hard you go when you exercise? And then those calculators try to take all that into account based on like your age, your weight, and like your body type. They tell you like what to do. Yeah, it tells you like this is how many calories you should have if you trying to cut if you're trying to so it's lose weight if you're trying to bulk and if you're trying to maintain right. and then then you take that number and then you put it into a calculator that'll tell you this is how much of that should be protein this is how much of that should be carbs and this is how much of that should be fat i think i need to do that with i don't know if my gym offers i still have a physical training thing that i can do with somebody yeah. and talk to them about it but like my thing was like i did all this research because i just am still so confused i'm like i think you're just making I've, it harder than you need to i mean Eat well, well, well this, is what, this is what happened so like for two weeks yeah. i i ate mostly well i would say like 90 10 or 80 20 depends on the days i was you know there's yeah. some drinking in there yeah but, like drinking can make a huge difference i was eating normally i was working out really hard like every time i went i would do a little bit of cardio at the end and yeah. then and i would spend most of my workout going super hard like really exas exasperating myself yeah that's and good. making that's sure good. that i'm sore yeah. i didn't lose a single pound in two weeks doing that a single one i could tell i look a little different i could tell like my arms look a little better but i That's still important. have like all this fluff and so i'm like so all right fuck that so now <laughs> i've gone into cut mode so i'm restricting my calories i'm still eating good food i'm still eating like yeah. high protein and now yeah. i'm flipping it i'm doing at least 30 to an hour of cardio and then a little say, bit of lifting yeah. and sauna and yeah. now i've lost two pounds in like two days not even yeah so i just I and now like yeah, weight loss cardio is going to be, like, one of the bigger differences. You can lose weight by weight training, but, like... It's so slow, bro. Or, like, I just still look... I still feel like I look the same. Like, my clothes are not fitting that much differently. And I did, like... I did that for two weeks. And so, usually, old me would just give up by now and just be like, fuck it. I, I it takes longer me. than two weeks. No, but, yeah. Know? So, that's why I was like, honestly, I'm just going to go into cut mode. And then I'll focus on building muscle later. So, I still am doing some weights, but I'm doing, like, really light, like... Tony yeah, type of but shits. again, the way that you want to build muscle is not the same way that somebody's doing a bulk wants to gain muscle. You want to gain muscle because you want to look toned, right? You want to just kind of be stronger and just look toned. Yeah. You're not trying to build muscle. So like the way you're working out right now, where you are at least putting in some kind of weight training with the cardio and eating properly, you're going to see, like you're going to get definition to your muscles. Like it just happens naturally. Yeah. It's going to happen. So like that's what I've focused on right now. I, I have a challenge. Mm -hmm. I want to go seven days in a row. Today was my third day. Today was really hard though because I am at a caloric deficit and I, I am trying to eat at the right time so that I do have the energy for my workouts. But at the end of the day, I literally feel like dog shit. Like I then am you're not depleted. Enough. You're I not can't eating. like think you're properly. Not like, literally, then you're not eating enough. I'm eating 1,200 calories a day, as per suggested by my doodad, my little fucking app. So like, yeah. and I f I feel like I'm eating properly. Like I'm still eating carbs because like mm -hmm. for a while I was like, no, I'm gonna go full keto and eat no carbs no, and I'm gonna lose weight so it. fast. And like for me personally, if I change the diet too much to something that I will dislike or I have to like, like I'm not gonna make fucking coconut bars or whatever the fuck like i'm not do that yeah like i'm not doing that so i'm just drinking um, mad water i'm trying to eat yeah. better no when you I, finish at the gym do you eat like right away yes so today for instance i knew so like yesterday and the day before i did heavy heavy cardio like i was like there for like an hour doing cardio yesterday and sauna oh, yeah. and then today i knew i was gonna lift or at least attempt to lift I was so tired. <laughs> like last yeah. night, I was like, there's yeah. no way I can go to the gym. But I actually woke up. I felt really good. And good. then I had a protein shake. So I had like banana, strawberries, almond milk, two scoops of protein in that bitch. Why two scoops that's of what protein? It, that's what it says. 
No. Just one? Okay, you should be trying to get most of your protein from food. Like, True. like I do, when I'm training, I will take protein supplements, but I've never taken more than like, unless for some reason I'm really struggling to get it from like food and can't find chicken, I'll have maybe a second scoop, but I would always just have like, it'd be like a scoop of protein like after my workout. I just put two because it's 12 grams, one scoop and 24 grams, two scoops. So it seems weirdly low for one scoop. So maybe it is fine to do two scoops. I mean, I just was going off low. of what the thing said. It doesn't, I would, weird. I actually, con it's weird because I contemplated doing just one scoop today because I was how, like, but how much protein is in those that? Is it, it's 24 grams of protein? In two scoops. Yeah. Total. Oh, okay. That seems low. And then, okay. yeah. Oh, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just the type of, it's like vegan yeah. protein power. I don't fucking That could probably, that could, yeah, that could be why. So I did that when it worked out. I felt pretty good. And then I came mm -hmm. home. I had like, Three egg whites and a full egg scrambled with a little bit of ham. Okay. I, For I me, can't, I can't let go of the ham, bro. I know if, it's salty, but I can't let no, go. No, that's fine. I can't, I, I can't, if I don't have carbs after like a strength <clears throat> training workout, my brain gets all foggy and messed up. Like Damn it ruins true. my day. So I think that's me. Not everybody's like that. Most people are like protein after a workout. And I'm like, yes, protein after a workout. But if I don't have carbs after strength training, I'm my, usually, I don't know what it is. My whole body just falls apart. You want to know what usually I do? But this is mm. so this y'all probably gonna laugh at what I'm about to tell you. So I was going to have avocado toast and two eggs after. Hell yeah. Because that's, that's one of my fat. that's that's like my favorite thing to have after yeah. a workout because it's protein, it's fat, and it's carb. Yeah, there's nothing but, that's great. So later today, season four is out of Fortnite, and I really it's wanted true. to be able to have a Red Bull and a fig bar, which mm. is carbs. And gotcha. so I just switched it around, basically, because I wanted okay. my energy later. So, okay. so that's different. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's like your body doesn't, if your body needs energy after it's done a workout, you can't be like, <laughs> but I need it I, for Fortnite later. Later, body. But I do You're because I know what will happen. I know what will happen. Like, if I were to eat the bread then, because I can't, I won't allow myself to have more than, like, one piece of bread every day or two days, right? Yeah. What app are you using to track this? My Fitness Pal. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a good one. There I right. gotta make you gotta figure out how to calibrate everything to your specification. Yeah, I'm gonna see if maybe like the physical trainer can help because they have like those machines that tell you all your body fat and shit. I want to do yeah, that. yeah, the DEXA scans and stuff. Yeah, yeah I need a DICA scan or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna know some of them aren't like for example, I'm not trained to give somebody nutrition advice. I just know it worked for me. No, yeah, I know that. And like, and like I feel that's like be the same thing. Like personal trainers don't need to have any experience on telling you what to eat. That and right? I've had physical trainers literally tell me two different things. Like I had one guy yeah. telling me to eat carbs at night, one guy telling me to eat carbs in the morning. I had one guy telling me that I, think I don't know. Some people I think get like too nitpicky about stuff. For me, it's just what feels right to my body and I figured out, hey, if I don't have carbs like within a 40 minute window of finishing my workout, I feel like shit. So I'm gonna have yeah. carbs within a 40 minute win window of finishing my strength training and it works out fine. It's like some people are like, oh, if you don't have protein within 20 minutes of your workout, it's pointless. It's a waste, bro. But it's like, it's not. And it's- But it's every like it's year, not. But every year that something changes, like something that someone will say, you'll be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then somebody will be like, oh no, a new study says that that's not true. Like everybody was like, oh, you burn more fat and fasted cardio. But then there's other studies that say you will burn more fat while you're doing the cardio fasted, but then you, you don't lose, as, it doesn't, the, the effects don't continue throughout the day. Yeah, that's what like, that's one thing there's I researched things. too, because I was going to the gym fasted for a while. And I actually yeah. felt a lot of energy when I did that. Yeah, but so now that, that I do this shake, I feel way better. So yeah, maybe if it's if I know I'm only gonna do cardio, I could do fasted cardio. Yeah, because I fast for a long. Like I cut my eating at like seven or eight, and then I don't eat till like ten the next day. So okay. like there's That's a cool. long period. Like I feel like when I go to bed hungry, although I don't really feel very good, I feel great the next morning. Is that normal? Uh, that's just the way that your body processes like sugars and stuff. That's why sometimes if you snack right before bed, you actually wake up feeling more hungry in the morning. Yeah, like because your insulin yeah, or like, whatever is like yeah, exactly. Low, so for example, one thing I noticed is that uh, if I go to bed at night a regular time and wake up normally, I don't necessarily have to eat right when I wake up. I could be like, oh, you know, it's like nine. I feel like I could wait until I go to work at like eleven to yeah. get food, and then I'm good until I get back. And then, but then when I wake up for early morning shifts, like when I was waking up at like 4 a.m. for shifts, I'd be starving because it's like you woke up in the middle of your body processing some kind of like yeah. 
spike of something that would normally have processed by the time you wake up. So the body's weird and people are always going to be finding new things about it. It's just figuring out what works for you and what's actually like what makes you feel better while you're still achieving your goals. Yeah, I'm still like in the midst of that, I think. I think I am finding what I, because like I said, I would have like old me two weeks ago when I saw like all this soreness and all this stuff I've been doing not showing the results I wanted because I'm impatient. I would have been like, fuck it. Yeah, so now like this is the longest I've ever gone to the gym ever. Like I've gone pretty like pretty much for a month straight now. Hell yeah. I don't feel like I look that much different, but I feel like I'm figuring it out. And I think that like six months from now, I'm going to thank my current self yeah. now a lot. And I think like, I don't know. I think losing weight is shitty. That's why it's so difficult. You literally have to put yourself at a deficit in order to do it. Yeah, you do. And, dr you know, drink a lot of water. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, that's why some people, when it's like people that are really overweight, start doing it. They start noticing right away that they're losing weight because very minimal changes will make huge difference. So it's like, I cut well, out so like a lot of juice. water weight, right? Yeah, well, it's like, like I cut out juice. And it's like, okay, there's all your calories that would have come from juice. And it's like, I cut out pop. And it's like, okay, there's all that too. And you're only drinking water. That right there is going to make a huge difference for somebody who is very overweight versus somebody who's not that overweight. Yeah. So like the, the closer you are to being where you want to be, the harder it's going to be to for get. For sure. Like I feel like I'm going to have this underarm fat and this little belly fat like forever. No, but I'm going to grind okay. to get rid of it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like motivated. Like I think too, one thing, I don't know if a lot, I'm sorry if you guys don't like fitness talk, but just really something I'm really involved Indeed. in right now in my life. Yeah. Um, But I think like, if I cheat, I'll extra cheat. Like if I'm like, all right, some people are like, I'm that. gonna have Chick Fil A on Friday, and then I'm gonna go out drinking, and that's my cheat day, which was like literally last Friday. But yeah. then I'm I woke up Saturday hungover, and I was like, I need hangover grease. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I need like breakfast, breakfast. I need a big breakfast. And then it was like, well, later the day I was like, well, I already fucked up this morning, so I could have this pop. Yeah, I know soda. a lot of people that are like, like that. some people yeah. are like they so can't now I, I can't days. I can't do it. I maybe like if I'm out with people and I have like yeah. a social excuse, but even that like I just got to really stick to it because it's something I really want. I don't feel happy like I saw a thing on Facebook and I never laugh at memes on Facebook except for this one. It was like, man, I wish that like back when I thought I was fat, I wish I was that fat right now. Because my <laughs> current fat. I've heard of that. <laughs> I've totally heard of that. Like, like oh, I can't no. believe, like, four years ago, I thought it was fat. <laughs> and, I, or, and, and also, one thing I did realize, this is the last thing I'll say about it. Yeah, go for is it. Is, like, I wish that I would have, I, I was looking at old pictures of myself for that Twitter thing. Um, and I saw a picture when I was at my lowest weight and I was like, man, if I would have just like went to the gym at that time, I would have been so fucking hot. And so I was like, bro, I regret it so much. But now I'm thinking like, well, I'm this right now in, in five years. Am I going to look back at me now and be like, man, I wish I would have went to the gym because now I'll be worse off. So hey. now it's like, I'm trying to like think of it yeah. in that way. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's no, it's totally true. Cause I see like all different types of people walking into the gym. Oh, for like, sure. Same. Dude, I see some people where I'm like, what are you even doing here? You already won. Leave. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Get out it's of here, chick. It's the maintenance game at that point. No, yeah. I can't wait till I get to that point. That's the thing, too, is, like, I can't wait till I can have, like, normal diet where I'm not restricting myself and yeah. then just working out and trying to be fit-ish, you know? Yeah, basically, your body's got to get – basically, where you are right now is your body's used to it. That's another reason why sometimes it's hard to lose weight when you first start because it, like homeostasis tries to keep your body in an area where it is so if like your body gets yeah come if your body gets comfortable at a certain area that's where it's going to try to stay so you've then got to like lose it and then keep it off long enough that your body's like this is what's normal yeah so i want to so, i want to get to that it's hard work it's uncomfortable and like there's no fucking shortcut people it's literally yeah. like watch yeah, what you eat and yeah. work out and don't i be think for you bitch. something else you can try doing is finding ways to like blend like strength training stuff like with cardio rather like, than just uh, like, like cardio and yeah like rowing like full and, body and, exercises type yeah of thing, and like, like i'll do stuff where I'll, I'll get yeah i'll get people to do stuff where like i'll get them to do like you know two or three strength based exercises and then i'll go get them to do like a round of like steps so that they're like you know doing steps and alternating on steps and then they're doing cardio and then or i'll get them to, like i'll get people to do box jumps and stuff and then it's like then you're, you're really you're, moving you're, 
yeah, you're moving, but then you're still kind of using your body in a momentum way. And I'll do these like cable r- squat row rotate things. And it's just like an w- interesting way to get I'm gonna people. I'm going to need you to move ASAP. <laughs> Dude, we would be yeah. the gym duo, bro. Yeah, exactly. Like I could, I could help you out if I ever visit and stuff. And it's just like, I don't know. It's finding what people like. So some people don't even do well in gyms. They do like boxing and other like. I feel like I would like- hugely benefit from doing yeah. like brazilian jiu-jitsu or something because that's like a full right. body thing but like that shit yeah. costs so much like what do i, I know like? that's the worst part i mean you i understand it's like a, a lot, but no yeah because it's like basically pay it's like ca- ca- paying for the gym and the trainer in one go except you don't get like a full gym basically yeah Usually. like sometimes they so do that's my thing inside. is why i don't want to do like those classes but yeah maybe someday. maybe, maybe if try. i like wanted to do it for like three months or something and see yeah what's up but yeah I don't know. Anyway, I'm so sorry if you guys only finished talk. I had to talk about it, though, because it's just so much on my mental lately. And then Amanda, you know, has the Avengers workout yeah. stuff, which I'm actually going to be checking out because I'm, I'm always down looking for new, like, things to do in the gym. Yeah, there's, like, stuff that I had seen people do, but, like, he does, like, <clears throat> kneeling military presses sometimes. So, like, Boy, he did, what? like, you, so, like, you do standing press, which is normal, like, you're just pushing you know, the bar above your head. And then he does kneeling. And I'm like, that's actually really hard because it takes away your leg drive. Standing, even if you're not doing like the push press where you're using your feet to like help guide it up and you're staying planted, you still have your legs firmly planted on the ground and that can help you, you know, it's like technically when you're doing bench press, you have your feet firmly planted on the ground, you're still losing, using leg drive. But like when you're on your, when you're doing a kneeling exercise that takes that out entirely. I was like, what the hell is this? Man, he just Didn't showed know. off his upper body at that point. He's like, sup? Sup? This is me training. Whatever. It's fine. I'll Whatever. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like six. I'm, I'm actually really embarrassed by this one because I'd done a fitness episode before and I feel like I was like, got to show what my like strengths were. And I feel like this video was like a lot of things that I just don't do, which is weaknesses. And I was like, oh God, this is sad. It's I mean, fine. it's all like you said, you want to get back in your groove yourself. So yeah. So that's what that's I said. Working on it. Working on it. Twerking on it. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) Speaking of twerk, never mind, because they're like high schoolers. Uh, Yeah. There's this one chick who wore a Chinese style dress to prom. It's a very beautiful dress, but I don't think that she is Chinese or celebrates Chinese culture. And this salty kid on Twitter, who appears to be Chinese, Mm -hmm. said... Your prom dress is not my culture. Co- what do you know? What he says he's like not my. Uh, co- you're my- appropriating my culture with this. Yeah, dress, it was basically. like your prom dress. Sorry, my, my culture is not your prom dress. Yeah, my culture right. is not your prom dress. And like, it wasn't even like a good tweet. I don't think it was just straight up saltiness, negativity it was. towards it was her. An, I thought it that was, was shitty. An insult. It was. It wasn't like, hey, maybe you shouldn't wear yeah, this like, because of you this reason. Could be way nicer about it. Yeah, and it was, and it was a full-on attack. And I would like to just, before we actually get into the brunt of what the discussion of the dress is, is that people went through his tweets and found a bunch where he was using the N-word and stuff. And then he said, and I quote, I was young back then, I've changed, people should be allowed to grow. You went after an 18-year-old. So if you're using the argument that in like 2013, you were young and said things that maybe you didn't need, why can't she be young and maybe do something that she doesn't realize is wrong if you think it's wrong, you know? Like, so why would your immediate thing be an attack? Right. And I think, like, maybe, like, if she was doing something, like, that was extremely cultural, I guess I don't know the full background of this dress, they're, but, they're, like, I feel you know, like she socialism, was just... socialism. They're, they're literally fashion dresses. It's not, like, it's not, like, a geisha outfit. It's not, yeah. like... It's not like a traditional um, uh, Native American headdress or something. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I clearly, we're, I, I, we need to totally put out there that we are clearly two white chicks. Yes. And we just don't know. So maybe this is, so maybe, we're sorry. Like, if you have if a different opinion. But as far as, yeah, as far as I know, this was specifically a dress created for, fa- like, it was just for fashion. Like, and it was one of these things really that, cool. and yeah, it was one of these things that, like, socialites and you know the wealthy could have and then people that that could be made with very expensive silks and stuff and then people that like weren't necessarily as high um society could also have because they could be made with cottons and just other cheaper materials and stuff so it was like you know it was like a culture bending thing it was just it was a it's a dress like it's kind of like a like a sari it's just something that's in it's uh what i'm trying to say traditionally to that area yeah you know? i felt like she was just appreciating and not appropriating like i Same. think she just th- thought it looked cool and i think like like 
one thing we kind of spoke about just before we started recording was like, it's okay to, for me, to me, like I said, as a white chick, what do I know? But like, yeah. it seems good to me to spread culture, even if you're like, why should we shun out certain types of people yeah. from our culture? Yeah. When and like, sharing yeah. culture is one of those beautiful things you can do, in my opinion, as yeah, long as it's then, done tastefully, which I thought this girl exactly. did. Me too. Like, that's the thing. Cause like, I do understand why people wearing, like I said, Native American headdresses to like Coachella and stuff is insulting because there's very deep meaning behind. Yeah. And that's like that a way culture. different reason that they wear those. Yeah, exactly. Cause that's not, you're not appreciating their culture. You're using their culture for fashion. Whereas this is a fashion item. This is literally, it's a dress. Yeah. This is something that was made for fashion. I feel like when people start arguing stuff like this to the extreme, that almost becomes the, well, is it okay if people eat sushi? Because it's Japanese. Is it okay if we eat Indian food? And I saw people making the argument of, you know, this girl can just wear it and everybody thinks she's beautiful. But somebody who is from China would get made fun of for wearing that the same way that somebody who's Indian might get fun of for make, for wearing a sari. Or they couldn't bring their, their Indian food to school because people thought it smelled weird. But now everybody loves Indian food. That's, in my opinion, that was the key word. The more people get exposed to things the more they can appreciate it and the more cultures get shared with the world. So the more that that's my opinion on the matter. I agree. Is like, like I, I mean, I feel like we agree a lot on most like issues. Yeah. Which kind of, it, it's kind of like weird. that means we're just like not shitty people. Yeah. True. Cause we don't agree on a lot of pop culture stuff, but it's like the true. serious stuff. I feel like we mostly agree on. Lady Gaga is the performer of our generation. Of course, Ashley. She's in the studio with Blood Pop. I'm sure I don't know still... if you understand the significance of that, but it's freaking okay. awesome. Okay. All right. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think that that girl, I think she was, she got really harassed about this, and I feel really bad she about did. that. Screw yeah, that's those people it, it that did that attack. to a young girl. Yeah. It's one thing if you're like, you know what? I feel like for me, this counts as cultural appropriation, and you can say that. But then you got other people that are that are also Chinese saying, "I don't feel this is a cult is cultural appropriation. Yeah, so I think too. it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I think it's great that they're spreading culture. And now this, the only upside to this is that she might be learning about that Chinese culture. Right. But it's like, uh, it's like you can't win in a situation like this because you can't tell somebody who feels like the culture is being abused that they're wrong because that's how they feel like it's it's weird like if i i guess i don't being like in the in the family that i'm from and where i'm from like i don't have mm. anything like i don't have like a food or a clothing item that is so ingrained in my culture that like if i saw someone yeah. else i'd be upset i feel like no, though I if i did i'd be like yo what's up you eat hot dish too that's sick like <laughs> or like yeah, no you like flannels dope like, it's just because that's that's the issue is that like Western culture is already very much comprised of like other European culture coming over here. Like I watched H three H three's video on it and he broke down that guy's outfit being like that hat that was made for baseball, which is a Western pastime. And he's like, the things yeah, I'm right? saying are ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous what I'm saying, and I'm saying that that's what you sound like right now. And yeah. like I wouldn't necessarily ever go to the extremes that Ethan goes with uh, with some of his opinions. Yeah, his his video was super like meant to be funny. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. But that's that's kind of like nice. that's what I mean. It's just oh yeah, because some people were more offended by the fact that it's not the problem that she's wearing the dress; it's the fact that she's being disrespectful with the this and they're like, they're doing the pop of bless and the vape nation. Like they're literally they're literally you know? just like, memeing it up, dude. They're literally memeing it up. So, like, that's what's happening there. Like, they're literally, it's like both of those <clears throat> symbols are like things that H3H3 H3 does. So, like, Papa Bless. the Papa Bless and the Vape Nation. Like, that's, that's his, that's his. So, like, they weren't trying to be disrespectful. They weren't trying to insult culture or anything. They weren't doing the, the Logan Paul, like, Japan's all about the. Yeah. Japan. And then, like, they're not yeah. Doing that. They're not doing that. They're just trying to enjoy prom. They're 18 year olds. And it's not like the kid who asked the chick to prom with that terrible sign. Oh my Did God. Yeah, I saw that. What the, f I can't even it's repeat what it said. Exactly. Because it was that bad. So like you, you're literally, it's one thing raged over an 18 year old being like, that was so stupid. And you should know better beyond any shadow of a doubt should know better than that. Well, that's just blatant racism. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. People, so you like know that, what, Amanda? It comes down to this a lot when we talk about issues. People yeah. love to be upset or passionately. They do. And that's, like, they yeah. like to feel right. They like to feel like, yeah, 
you can't do that because that's my thing. I'm mm-hmm. right. F you. Disrespectful. B. Whatever. I'm right. Yeah. People no, love exactly. that. They love to feel vindicated. Otherwise, he would have come at her kinder, not... Oh, and yeah. Like, literally went on her. He and now he's mean. trying to defend... Yeah, and now he's trying to defend himself and the things he said years ago. And I'm like, same shit. Side buddy. note. Side note. Yeah. Do you mm. think that people's old tweets should be brought up like that? I don't, personally. Um, in this situation, yes. Because he specifically defended himself saying, I was young back then. I'm like, she's young right now. So why does she deserve to be vilified for what she's doing right now rather than maybe just... I also don't think that wearing the dress is the same way as tweeting the n-word though. It's not. Exactly. That's my thing. So if he's going at her like she's done something so reprehensibly wrong, but then can defend himself using the n-word. True. True Jedi. Like, is it, you know, like honestly, when people bring up old tweets, sometimes the thing to do is be like, yeah, I was a piece of shit like five years ago. That doesn't change the fact that you're being a piece of shit right now. Not that this girl is, but you know what I mean? Sometimes you no, get brought yeah, up yeah. in arguments yeah. where, you know. I don't think old tweets should be brought up personally. Oh, but they're going to be. They're going to No, be. they will be. But, like, yeah. you have to look at that's, the, that's the context, age. too. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. like, Twitter five years ago or seven years ago was mm. a lot different than it is now. Mm. Now everyone's really mad. Was. But before, you it's could literally true. just say whatever and it'd it's be true. like, okay, like, yeah. It was awesome. Oh. It's awesome. I mean, I do... Th- I, I, Not that I think you should be, like, shitty online, for sure. No. But people get real upset real quick. I mean, we're talking about it right now. This girl wore yeah. a, f- a beautiful dress, and a this guy flipped dress. out. And th- not only that he flipped out, but there's so many retweets and favorites and replies that are, like, backing him up. Like, yeah, exactly. it's like, bro, you're crazy. Maybe, yeah, like, like, like I said... We are just two white women's who yep. maybe don't have the same experience or friction, nope. maybe, that my culture, like, like if I was a part of a culture that was maybe looked at differently, I may feel differently, right? I don't yeah. know. I'm just me, right? I have very well, that's, little experience that's why with that. I, that's why I try to make the distinguishing, you know, <clears throat> the, the, the difference between something like a Native American headdress, where the when, when we first started hearing about cultural appropriation, it was very much related to that. And I was yeah. like, I agree with this. I can see why this is a problem because they're they're not respecting the culture of what that's from. They're not respecting like what that means. the meaning, what it means. Whereas yeah. this is a dress, and it like from what I can tell, from you know, I I did a little bit of research on it just to see like maybe this these dresses did mean something very significant, and it's disrespectful for somebody that's not of that culture to wear. But as far as I can tell. It's just like a Victorian era dress would be to Western culture. It's just supposed to be, it's supposed to be fashion. As far as I can tell. And fashion wrong, should have please, no limits, Jedi. Yeah, like, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I see. So I'm just glad you're not appropriating that flannel. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. It's all I'm, I'm glad not. for, Jedi. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, bless up. You know? You can argue anything. It's just like, when should you stop? <laughs> All the time. Please yes, never argue usually. and be dumb. <laughs> internet, yeah, no, stop. Yeah. Stop, yeah. internet. Just stop. All the time. Stop. Quit All it. Quit it. So, uh, you know what we'll never quit doing? Giving what? advice at the end of the podcast. Yes. Side we actually note. have a lot. Do we have a lot? Okay, cool. I'm down to help y'all. Side note. Okay. I don't think Amanda feels the need to announce this, but I do every single time. Yeah. I am not a qualified life coach, life professional, mental health person. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All I know is that I've lived life and I might have some yeah. advice that could help your situation or maybe Amanda does too. All yeah, right. We're I not professionals. Not We're just here to try to help based yeah. on what we know and which is yeah. for, for me is not much. Actually, no, I know a lot of shit. Okay. You do. I you do. do. You do. For sure. Okay, so this was one that was actually sent like two days after we filmed the last podcast. Week. Okay, yeah, so I figured we should start with still that current one. though, still current, still current, still current. current. They so might that... still be having problems. Yeah, I don't know um, any so... of these questions by the way before she asks them, so it's very exciting for me. Yeah, because like we got a handful today, so like hopefully Hell there's some yeah. good ones. This one seems good. So I was in a relationship for almost three years with a girl. I truly loved her, but she was very mentally, emotionally slash emotionally abusive and occasionally physically abusive. Not cool. Yikes, I finally dog. left 
her a little uh, a little over a year and a half ago after I caught her cheating for the fifth time. Five times. Wow, that's I mean, when you that's your exit cue. Five. Yeah, she says, I know I should have left a lot earlier. But I get it though. Sometimes you get Hold on, your thing just cut out. That they're not emotionally. Oh, your thing oh. just cut out like a sod five times. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I, I just said, you know, I get where he's coming from. I haven't had somebody cheat on me like five times, but like I've had people be like repeatedly kind of unfaithful being shady behind my back and it's like you almost get to the point where you feel like they owe you something so you stick around to try to get what they how owe you ex- like you yeah, deserve exactly. i deserve you to be good to me exactly so let's do that it's but then for they not they don't it's for not. let don't me tell it. you that they do not and will not i've only exactly. done that once though i've only gone back to the cheater one time it was my first relationship seemed like a good idea at the time it was not mm-hmm. she so was she uh, news completely bears. The head news bears word. Um, she completely destroyed my self confidence. Uh, whatever Aww. you can think of that's mentally abusive, she did. Though her biggest thing was telling me how worthless of a man no. I was, and I came to believe everything she said. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say that that's a tactic to keep you feeling bad about yourself, so that yeah. you don't call her out for her bullshit. Yeah, because that is like a favorite tactic of people to do. They make you feel worthless, so that when they do something wrong, they can be like, "Well, I wouldn't have done it if you weren't so shitty." Yeah, but they're like, the ones who are shitty. They exactly. They will Remember. take. They will pound down your self worth so that the only self worthiness you do get is from them. From them. Yeah. They um, are the so controller like, of your emotions. Yes. And as a no bueno yeah. taco as well. Exactly. So um, what? Uh, think, it sounds like this person's out of this though. So what's the advice? Yeah, but we've got. As, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the lingering effects of the emotional abuse because I've been there too. Oh. It sucks. So these things oh have God. stuck with me. And I've been unable to stay in a good relationship ever no. since. Last week, my ex hit me up out of nowhere and wanted to get back together. No! No. That's going to no. be a no from me, dog, because oh, said, I have no intentions of getting back with her. Good. So let's finish this question. We got, one, we got two more sentences here. I will not do that to myself. But I realize that I still stay love strong. her even though I thought I had moved on. I guess I'm asking... And what I'm asking is, how do I deal with these rediscovered feelings? And if you have any advice for getting into and keeping a new healthy relationship, no contact with her. Block her. Don't even like, creep block her, her tweets. Yeah, don't block her creep email, her favorites. Her. Don't look at who she's talking about. Yeah, don't look Literally, at her Instagram. Block her, block her on all social media. Tell your friends that you don't want to hear anything about her, that like she messed you up. Like Really drive home the fact that like she messed you up and you are trying to move on with your life. And uh, just really kind of get work on getting better with yourself because I feel like that. Yeah, can you be need to maybe. Issue. So it sounds like there's two things. They're saying they still have like low confidence and all these issues from like being basically abused. Yeah. And then like she pops back up. So you're thinking, oh, well, like, you know, one, maybe she's different too. Maybe like I can get those feelings back because I'm not finding that within myself right now. No, because he's saying that he does have the feelings but knows better than to go back to her. He just wants to know how to deal with it. So he's he's no, but like he part. actually likes her still. He just yeah, said. exactly. So like yeah, maybe so. the reason that he does is because he hasn't found love within himself yet. Yeah, so he, I sh- think he does need to cut that bitch out. Yeah, that's what I mean. You got to completely cut your ties because I think a lot of what you're feeling towards her is just linked to that like negative self esteem and the fact that because she broke you down so much and the only time you felt good was when she was allowing you to feel good is that like you still have to break that behavior, especially when somebody's like emotionally, mentally, and physically abusive, like. You start, like, I've, like, I've been there. Maybe not to the same, we, I don't know what kind of mental abuse it was and stuff, but, like, it's messed up, and it'll mess up how you react to other people and how you act around other people. Yeah, you are not so damaged gonna, goods, bro. You're going to be fine. Not, yeah. Clean break is the best way to get over somebody. Yeah. And not really clean her. break. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, don't answer her. Make sure that your friends know that you have nothing to do with her. Delete her number. Don't to help text her. her. Yeah, if you got friends that are trying to help her, talk to them. And if they still don't back off with it, cut them out too. Because yep, cut the fat, bro. Yeah, it's not worth it. If she won't leave you alone, like really, you can you can give her the full like. You are a terrible person. I feel like you made me a worse person. I want nothing to do with you. And then like just but damn if you can help Jedi, it, that's fucking. Like, but if you can real. help, <laughs> it is. But if you can help it, just block. Do not respond. Don't do anything. Yeah, don't respond to her. Especially, I think you shouldn't even respond to her. Don't tell her that she's oh, worthless because they love that shit. I, I think know, you just gotta exactly. tell them or don't tell them anything. Yeah, do just, you? And it, you'll you'll yeah. find your self confidence again. You'll find you're not damaged yeah. goods. I think that's important no. to drive home because they make you feel like that. Like my first girlfriend made me feel like. Like, I was too damaged to be loved by anybody else ever. 
They'll do and that. she was hella wrong, bro. I'm awesome now. Like, shit's yeah, great. So, so awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Bro. yeah. Bitch. Um, because that, that's, and that's the thing in terms of like how to deal with the rediscovered feelings. Don't try to take it out of like a rediscovered mode and don't direct them at her. Try to treat it as if it's like any other situation where, you know, people go through breakups where they aren't the one who started the breakup and are left with those feelings. And you just got to like occupy your mind, hang out with friends, go do new things, like avoid thinking about that situation. Don't put yourself in situations that are going to like potentially keep you around her and stuff. Delete like she's Facebook, back to you. lawyer up, hit the gym. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly, though, hitting the gym really helps because it help with your ma- your mental, you know, faculties and all that stuff. And just like have fun, like go out and try try things that you always wanted to do that you never did, or you that she travel? wouldn't let you do, or she didn't yeah, like to do. Seriously, like, fuck you, like, girl. Yeah. Sorry, like <laughs> have have like a twenty four hour like video feel- game binge. Yeah. You know, go on a road trip to wherever. Like get on a plane somewhere that you've always go to a concert you've always wanted to go to this summer. Like just do things that'll make you happy. Yes, and, and eventually you just stop like bullshit be like i don't f with you girl yeah Peace. i'm sorry but yeah i'm glad that you at least know that you can't you can't go back but yeah this person sounds like actually pretty well adjusted yeah, about it dealing, like you're just, you're just going that. through it and it happens to the best of us like like we've both been there and so mm-hmm. that's why we're pretty much able to say like yeah man like i understand but if you just do these things it is harder when you're in it though to like like you might have an inkling about these these things and be like oh yeah i can't do that but like it is hard when you're feeling it so it's a lot easier for us to yeah. be like third party perspective say yeah, what's going everything's on but, gonna like, be different yeah, yeah. but because i had an abusive ex oh yeah you continue you finish no i was just gonna say you just gotta go be yeah you. i i did like i did an immature route one of those times i had an ex together but they weren't being open about it to me they were just like tag your tumblr posting and stuff and like <gasps> no. putting it out there so you were so, like, like i, plant, I wasn't planting the seeds so i wasn't even using like tumblr or anything at the time but i kept getting these notifications from like my old tumblr so i oh, just <laughs> i just like i just took a, a gif of taylor swift where you're never getting back together and posted it and then Bro. i was done and you deleted tumblr yeah <laughs> just done <laughs> No, then they deleted their account. Like, it all just ended. It was like they noticed. It was like... Bye, Felicia. Exactly. You don't necessarily have to do anything like that. I'm just saying that, like, you can have fun with I it I love it. That's to. the right amount yeah. of petty. I love it. It is the right amount of petty. It's amazing. Well, then you gotta come out and be like, I want you, Mac. Like, yeah. You're lucky. She came right at you. So you can just... I would just ignore it. Literally, just ignore it. Yeah, it's... So trust me, it's just it'll be so much better yeah. when you're, you're a better well, you and you yeah. find somebody who isn't a piece of shit. Yep, you're gonna hopefully, love it. You're gonna be all right. You heard bro. this? Yeah, hopefully you heard this because it's been like five days because you sent it after we were like two days past the yeah, podcast well, recording. But they will. Hope I just it. have a good feeling. Yes, love you, bro. Don't even know you, but exactly all love. Let's see. Uh, what? Let's see the next question. Uh, if one of you and your best friend starts getting, wait, if one of you and your best friend starts getting really close, like boyfriend, girlfriend close, and you're out with them and they lean in, should you back off or let it happen? Wait, what? Those both, we can reread. That, I got lost in the sauce. I feel like bit. I'm missing. I, I feel like I'm not understanding. If one of you and your best friends starts getting really close, like boyfriend, girlfriend, close and you're out with them and they lean in oh should you back off or let it happen okay oh so if you are, you are out with single? a friend so if you have a friend who's okay wait are you not into this friend though that's the difference here because if you're into them then yeah let it happen. And you're, if you're both single and you're into them then yeah whatever yeah whatever if you're not single though maybe like don't. Oh, maybe because it's your best friend is you are you like worried about like messing up the friendship or something because then you should have a conversation before you guys move out to make out town worth it now i have the conversation after yeah. bro <laughs> but i feel like this already happened like what happened this yeah very we need to know hypothetical we need more information we there, need more information think, as long as everybody's single and consenting sure yeah if it. you're single and you kind of are feeling if a you're not vibe, into it back off of it if you're like i don't want to be rude be rude back off oh yeah <laughs> dude, i hate when people are like well, I didn't want to be rude, so I let him mm-hmm. kiss me. Like, bro, you just got that person's hopes so high. Don't be that yep. person. To stand and up honestly, for yourself. But don't be the guy who does something that catches somebody like that off guard. 
or True. the girls. Yeah, don't, like don't you gotta re- either talk about it or really read the vibes. Yeah, because like you could come off as a creep, and yes. actually that's sexual harassment. You actually, will it's ruin assault. the friendship. It's sexual. It's sexual assault. I don't like, want to assault you. anybody, yeah, even sexually. Assault. Especially, <laughs> especially sexual. Especially sexual. <laughs> I meant it the other way around. Yeah, of course. I know. I meant yeah, it so that's, the right yeah, way. Yeah, don't be that person. All right, next question. Some of these are like short, so this is, we can probably get through a lot of them. Dope. So I've we got time, bro. We still got like 20 minutes if we want to do another hour and a half. Yeah, there we go. Damn, um, the look on her face just now was awesome. I want that it? to be like my new donation <laughs> gift or something how you just like looked up at the camera it was you know awesome what I, did? I don't you know either really you just look like really fucking mad for some reason Hell or yeah. like confused thanks for the donation <laughs> i know yeah like <laughs> you just gave me what oh god okay this is kind of a serious question so okay um i've been struggling with mental health issues the past few months and i haven't told my parents yet because how I've tried, but it just feels wrong, and it's getting to the point where I need help because I don't know how long I keep going like this. Sorry for the negative question, but I genuinely need help. Okay, biggest thing is um, you just got to do it. If you think it seems like you think they'd be supportive, you just don't know how to tell them. I know that I was going through a really, really, really rough time once when I was in high school, and it got to the point I felt like I couldn't tell anybody about it, but I ended up calling Kids Help Phone, which is kind of like it's like a suicide prevention hotline, but just specifically directed at people under the age of 21. Um, and it can just be like, if you're getting bullied, if you are having thoughts of suicide, if you have mental health issues, you can just call and work things out with them. And like something about that conversation snapped me back into my head long enough that when my mom got home, I like immediately was able to have a conversation with her. So maybe it would be a good idea if you tried reaching out to one of those resources, like, like, uh, if you're in the States, like I know there's the national suicide prevention hotline, there's probably different stuff directed for kids as well. Like there's there's going to be stuff out there that you can um that you can do um but honestly if you feel like you're struggling that much like maybe maybe find pick one of them if it's one of these things where you feel like if you sit both of them down at the same time it might be hard to get get it out just pick which one maybe you you agree with more or if you guys have like a family supper or something like just say it or like literally just walk into a room and be like i have a serious i have something serious to talk to you guys about so it sets the tone right off the bat i think that's sometimes that's the hardest thing because like when people are in a good mood you're like well, I don't want to bring them down with my problem. And if people are in a bad mood, you're like, well, I don't want to make the situation work worse. Yeah. You gotta realize that sometimes there isn't like the perfect timing to to say that you need help, but it's always the right time. It is always the help. it is always okay to ask or say that you need help, in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Especially and when it comes to family. Like, I don't know how your family is, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> usually like a parent is gonna wanna help their child yeah, exactly. at all costs. Like I think I had to have a conversation with my mom when I was younger and like, I'm so glad I did. Like she stepped up to the plate for me. She was like, okay, well we have health insurance. So we're going to find, so we're going to find a person in our network and it's going to be okay. Like hopefully your family will have a similar reaction or at least just be there to listen to you if you're having a hard time, because the more, the longer that you don't, the worse you will start to feel about it. And then it'll become even more impossible. It was like, I haven't told him yeah. by now, so how am I ever going to tell him? Like, yeah, it's, it's just going to get bigger in your head. Yeah, so. it's it's best to just let it out. Pick one of them that maybe you like you really trust the most, I guess, or maybe you yeah, both like, of them. and if you feel like it's equal, both of them, like whenever they both seem available, like you can just do it. But honestly, the second one of them is like available, to talk to, like, just be like, I really wanted to do this when Dad was around, or too, but like I need help, blah blah blah, and then yeah, there you go. Yeah. Good luck, man. Just Good luck. know that it's okay to, to talk about her. It, it should be anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And you, that like it doesn't seem like you're afraid of telling them. You just feel like you don't know how. So that's actually a better thing than yeah. being like, my parents don't ever listen to me, so I feel like I can't talk to them. Then there would still be like, the same advice. Just reach out to outside help. Reach out to outside resources. Counselors, could, friends. Yeah, you can talk to your school counselor too. Like Sometimes they have ideas on how you can talk to your parents and stuff like that. But it seems like... It's not your parents that you're afraid of. It's just that you don't know how to talk about it, which is really normal. Nobody wants to have to say that they're feeling that way. It's not like, unfortunately, people don't see mental health the same way they see, like, I have a broken arm. I need to see a doctor. You know, like, I feel I've been sick for a week. I need to see a doctor. It's not people see it that way. So, like, it it makes it really hard to get help. So I feel like, you know, it's just, yeah, there's never, you got to realize there's never going to be a right time and you just got to. Just do it. Yeah, You'll feel so much better. Yeah. All right, we're going to move to the next question. 
So I like this girl at work, but I've never been in a relationship. I'm how do I approach this? Should I tell her I've never dated before? First off, you don't need to tell her you've you never dated have before. To. Until no, she maybe asks. Like if you, yeah, if you go on a couple of dates, then maybe you can be like, she can be like, oh, relationship history. And you can be like, I've actually never been in a relationship. But I think again, that's perfectly fine, especially exactly. if you but like tell she her into you. Were, you. That's yeah, the other how thing. Do you tell, I'm like together. sometimes really dumb at telling if someone's into me. Yeah, a lot of people are. But when it's so obvious to others around too. you. It happens. It happens to the best. But this of us. is a work situation, so you got to be careful. Too. You can't just like go at her because then if she's one hundred percent not into the situation, then you have to work with each other. I don't think that's that bad. Like I got asked out twice <laughs> by the same coworker way back in the day, and I I didn't make it weird. I was just like, "No, nah, I'm gay, bro." Like <laughs> I was in a or, relationship, and someone knew I was in a relationship. Festival with me. Facebook oh, that's one morning, that and then weird. I worked with them, so that was weird. So, like, don't what? be like that. Don't, don't. No, this was two jobs ago. Two jobs ago. Not two jobs ago. It was like the the job that I would have had before I did the job, and then, but it was in the city that I used to live in. Yeah, that is a little awkward. Yeah. What sounds? What What did the first part of the question say? Like, yeah, we're gonna. I like, like, I like her at work, but I've never been in a relationship. I'm 24. It doesn't actually. How do I approach? This? So, like, they haven't. You're, you're like getting ahead of yourself. If you're like, should I tell her yeah, I've never I dated say, before? You're like, like ahead of the stage of like. don't walk up to her and say that you've never dated before. Just you also don't just be like, hey, sorry. Like, it's the same advice I'm going to give to anybody who says, like, hey, you know, like, if you're, if, you're not, if you're not down for this, that's totally fine. We yeah. can just continue being coworkers and friends. But would you like to get some coffee sometime? Yeah, bro. And then she play, can let you know. Cool. You literally, like, I always say in such, especially work situations, always buffer with, uh, you know, it's fine if it's a no, like, I'm not trying to make things awkward, but blah, 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 because remember I had to that, ask, though. <laughs> but it's just, like, in a work situation, like, she, if she feels uncomfortable, she can go to HR. If, she, if you feel, it's same thing, if somebody, if Who a girl would go to HR on you, about that, though? It's, like, actually really common. because some. Well, if it's a simple question, maybe not, but if it's one of these, it's, again, it's, it's how you go at the situation. True, yeah, you can't be like, hey, baby, what's up? Yeah, like exactly. Work, you gotta right? you gotta be like, hey, not trying to make any awkward, but uh, I'd really love to get a chance to know you better. Is there any chance you'd like to get a cup of coffee sometime? And then she can be like, yes or no. Yeah, I don't. I think like when you come into it that way too, like the girl won't feel like, oh my god, I had to say yes, but I don't want to, or like yeah, or just the the panic no. Yeah, like oh my god, no. people panic no, no. I panic no every time, even if I like them. I'm like, no, no get away from <laughs> exactly. me. Exactly. So I mean, if you can kind of work them into, yeah. So honestly, deal with that part in terms of approaching it. You got to approach it very respectfully, and maybe actually look into what your company's laws are about dating. Some companies do not allow coworkers to date. Yeah, and if they find That's out okay. one of you is in trouble, I think yeah. too. Like honestly, there's nothing wrong with never having a serious relationship or have dated no. by 24 or being a virgin at 24. None of that. Like yeah. I personally don't think that matters. As long as you're like, you know, a well-adjusted person who maybe instead of that, you were busy going to school, working, working on yourself, yeah. whatever. Like, there's nothing yeah, wrong exactly. with being single as long no. as you're aware of bettering yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need another person to do that. And if you go into no. a new relationship inexperienced, you know, maybe, yeah, you would eventually if you really got to know somebody and they asked or you just wanted to let them know, like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, like, you're my first. Some girls might think that's dope. Yeah, it's like you gotta, but then on the other hand, there are some girls that are like, I don't want to deal with the emotional baggage of being a person's first relationship because some people are also like, true. Like, I, I don't might... want to deal it's... with somebody who hasn't been in a relationship. I'm not, I don't think I'm like that. I um, feel like I am too old at this point to help a new person. <laughs> I want, fair. Yeah, yeah, but like... it doesn't mean like, you know, well, you maybe, can't... I don't know. I guess you can't, you should never cast it off people. On the person. Yeah, it person, would depend some on people who've never been in a relationship are, aren't gonna like. There's like, there's probably people who have been in relationships who come across as like being really needy and not having ever yeah, been like in relationships. Yeah, like desperate. You know? De that's such a bad look. You just, yeah, you just don't want to be desperate. That's don't, really the only don't thing. Don't appear yeah. desperate, even if you are, and don't, don't appear like clingy. Yeah, or be don't be clingy. Yeah, don't. I be think clingy. like as long as you're a well-adjusted person, I think it's just fine. It's not yeah. a big deal. All right. But I'm not going to help. No, never mind. <laughs> yeah. At the age I am now, I don't think I'm That's what I mean. Some able people are like to that. like they just couldn't help but... you out too much. Yeah. What if it was their first time with a girl though? Would you that's deal with the, that? That's that's well, that's what you wouldn't. 
It would really depend on the person. It would depend on the situation. I don't want to be like, I don't want a girl to date me and be, I'll be her first girl. And then she just goes back to the convenience of guys. I don't really, yeah. that's not okay, attractive that's to me. That's fair. All right. Next I'm question. not your fucking fling chick. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not high school anymore. It's experimentation time is over. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm not your science experiment chick. Exactly. I All mean, right, maybe question. it depends on the person. Depends. How hot are you? <laughs> is that is what face would ask? How? No, that's not what I'm saying. No, it's like I'm joking. Let's I'm catch joking. a vibe, girl. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. All right, this one's probably something we can help with. Okay. Um, I've been struggling with my sexuality because I'm not sure if I'm bi or not, or if I'm just too afraid to admit it. So I'm definitely attracted to guys, but am I attracted to girls, or do I just love them like a bro? Um, sometimes I'd see a girl and think she's cute. I date her, but when it comes to sexual stuff with girls, I'm a bit iffy about it. Like I'd kiss a girl, but I don't know about the sexual stuff. There was one time I was attracted to a girl for a while though. So I guess the question is, are you considered gay slash bi if you're not willing to do the nasty? This is a really good question. And I'm one it that is. I don't think I know the answer to like a simple answer. Anyway, I can't just be like, yep, you're the gay. Like, I think honestly, I feel like this being attracted to somebody doesn't necessarily sexually because a lot of people see sexuality as being on a scale yeah. some people are very firmly gay some people are very firmly straight but then other people kind of float in between so you could be straight but then have this thing here being like i think girls are pretty a little bit more than in a friendly but then i don't think i could have a relationship with them yeah and i think I for you to really understand it is you'd have to get to a point where you met a girl that was like yeah it depends on if you have everything a with that girl yeah, I think it might just depend, like, if you met the the right girl. Like, I, I do agree with what Amanda's saying, like, about there kind of being, like, a spectrum. Like, you don't have to sit there and put yourself in a box and be like, yeah, well, I guess yeah. I'm bi now, guys, so I'm going to tell everybody. Yeah, like, you don't, need you don't to have tell to people. tell nobody. You just no. be you, okay? Yeah, just, just be you. And if you find someone that you're like, yep, cannot get that person out of my head, maybe pursue that. let's try that to if, figure yeah. it out. Exactly, because what is that Disney actress just came out and that was her thing. It was just like, I thought I was straight and I was a Christian person. And now it's like, wow, okay, I can't get this girl out of my head. And I struggle with it for years. But it's just like, no need to be a struggle about it. Yeah. Just like, and the thing that you don't need to like stress to put a label on yourself. Like, like it's not like you are going to get a crush on a girl and then you have to be like, wow, fuck, now I got to tell my mom. Like maybe yeah, exactly. once you found the right girl and you got in a relationship, then yeah, maybe like share with mm -hmm. people around you. But like, yeah. I don't think you should be uncomfortable about having any type of feelings about anybody. Yeah. You just so love. Like, just love, girl. Just go love. Or boy. Yeah. It's a girl, right? Or a boy. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, just love. Yeah. Just love. And if you only love dudes, that's fine. Yeah. Or I can, maybe, yeah, exactly. Either way, regardless of whether you're a guy or a girl, it's the same advice, really. So. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, be. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be. And I, yourself. I honestly, I do think that sometimes people thinking of sex in ways that doesn't seem normal <clears> to them <throat> can be weird. Because I, I actually have a lot of friends that were like ended up being gay guys who were like could not imagine possibly having sex. And some guys never do. Some people are just not down with that. I'm not gonna say it because I feel like it'll get things. You know, the way that guy that people traditionally see guys as having sex. But you know, straight people have sex that way too. So it's not like an exclusive Yo, thing. Oh, she's talking about anal. Yeah, that's the one you can say. It's your channel. So, <laughs> yo, but it's funny. Some people were like, no, I'd never do that, so I can't be gay. And I'm like, straight people who do it. So, like, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. That doesn't mean that well, you're yeah. not attracted to dudes. So, like, no, I've found like dudes, I've found dudes attractive before, but I know for sure that if it push came to shove and it was time to get down missionary style i'd be like no blowy no, joey's for ashley no not for me it's just not no. for me dog like no dicks on her around the mouth area please thank you wow, she just said that <laughs> it, did. it is true it's true or so, yeah, anywhere just, around me ever. yeah exactly there you go <laughs> it's just like that's the thing but i can think no guys are attractive it. like you there's a, i think even like straight dudes think other straight dudes are attractive yeah, they, without wanting to like do the straight nasty. dude who will refuse to call another guy attractive. They're a little bit in. They're, about a, little, they're a little guy. <laughs> a little bit weird about Mike it. Mike Pence, I'm talking about you. Ooh, I'm yep. just kidding. <laughs> All right. We got, what do we got here? Do we want to keep doing advice or do we want to do with spoilers? <sighs> do you have a good question? Let's, let's wrap it up with a good one. Let's see here. Dang, I have to pee so bad, bro. 
Oh no. Like I have been drinking so much. All right. So it's only been an a... hour and a half since I last went. <laughs> All right. So we have a couple, but we'll, we can save them for next week. Or if you guys didn't get your questions answered here, I can just answer them in a separate video. Um, and we can do them here next week. So, for sure. hi, Amanda. I have had a crush on this guy for three years. It's pathetic. Whoa. I know he expresses how he feels towards me, but doesn't say anything or ignores when I ask, what are we? I don't know what to do. And every time I leave him, I always come back or he reaches out saying he misses me. He's afraid of commitment or he doesn't want to make the commitment, but he wants you on that hook. Yeah. He wants you around. So you don't want to be the back convenient. burner, bitch, dude. Yeah. Does he date other people in between this? Like, is it one of these things where he just like, or is he just yep. one of these like super free spirit guys that just doesn't want to actually have to like commit to one person? So you got to figure, you either got to let us know that. Yeah. Or be like, you got to decide how much, what are you worth? Like, what are you worth to yourself? Are you okay kind of being in this like pseudo relationship where there's no actual terms listed out? Or do you want commitment? Because if this guy can't give it to you, might be time because you know you yeah don't wanna... if, he, if he hasn't given it to you by now three years in you're probably not gonna get what you want out of it yeah personally unfortunately. Yeah, yeah and the, honestly you know maybe it's one of these things that you start moving life and you no know, because then if he if he reaches back out to you misses you you think know? cut out if he misses you you would it says well because it says if i was gonna say like sometimes if you start moving on they'll that they messed up and then pony up but it just says that he reaches oh, out anytime yeah. he but it's like that but is just here to keep you on that hook. I guarantee if you get a boyfriend, you'll flip out. Yeah. So guarantee. I think you that's gotta... a midnight gear. That's a hundred percent guarantee from me to yeah, you that that exactly. will happen. I say you either gotta give him the ultimatum. You gotta be and I hate ultimatum, but Same. in this situation where Not it's been like ultimatum. three years, it's been three years, you gotta be like, look, like I want a relationship with you. Is that something you are ever gonna be interested in? Yes or no? And if it's one of these like not right now or he never answers you then yeah gone. you deserve and then if he, more but then if, yeah but then if he gets real honest with you being like i have a really hard time making commitment because of xyz blah 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 and you can have like a discussion about why maybe yeah that then maybe sense. pursue it but if it seems like he's just not the type that's yeah, gonna if he's do just that. flaking on you all the time fuck that it's too stressful life's too short yeah for real too short. three years and, it, and if and if it like continues Exactly. If he continues doing that and you never have that come to Jesus talk about everything, then you're just wasting your own time and your own yeah. value on someone who doesn't value you. Exactly. Word to you, brother. Word. Oh, yeah, brother. Right. So that was pretty much every question we got. There was like a couple we missed, but we cool. can do them next week. But Glad to help you. We are professionals and we are professionals. good at helping people. So keep them coming. Yep. All right, yeah. so that's right. the end of the podcast. Unless you want Avengers spoilers, yeah. So let's do this. We've never done this before, y'all. Amanda's so excited, dude. Yeah, I'm ready so to we've talk. never done this before. Uh, great nope. podcast. In case you don't want to hear Avengers stuff, but if you do, keep listening. But if you don't, have a nice time. Great talk. Yeah, I mean, See you next you know, my week. My webcam is like wilding right now. It's look, it looks I, better now. You look okay, just look like, like a I'm, young Axl Rose right now. Okay, because a minute ago I looked like an undead Kurt Cobain. So like, nah, well, <laughs> you looked pretty dead. good before, but now you look like I don't know. Clearer. It's going wild today. It's always when we do the podcast. Anyways, I think that provided enough buffer to get into Avengers. The spoilers, bro! I can't believe everybody died. What the what? fuck? Yeah. Okay, so most of them I expected, some of them I didn't. Really? And when it got to the people, like, well, because I know. When they killed Tom Star Lord, I was like, I'm never coming to this again. I'm never. Yeah, but you know what? Once they got to the point that, like, every guardian was dead except for Rocket, like, you know True. that it's not going to stay that way. Yo, that but was one thing, too. I was like, sad now. if they had only sad done a couple of them, I'd been like, damn, maybe they're never coming back. But there still but could be I mean. some of them that are never coming back, right? Some of them, that's what, no, I think they're going to do, they, basically what they're going to end up doing is that, like, there's two characters that everybody thought at least one of them was going to be dead by the end of this movie that will probably end up dying at the end of the next movie. And it's going to be, it's just going to flip it, basically. So who, there are people that are going to die in the next one and they will be gone, gone. And but a lot of it doesn't change the fact that them dying in this movie was sad, especially the way some of them were dying and stuff. It was like heartbreaking. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When the little Pete, when little Pete was like, yeah, I don't feel it's so good. So good, Mister Star. Okay, so for him, you know why it's worse? Because he's so young and spider sense. He could literally feel himself dying and had no idea what was happening. Had no idea how to stop. 
His um, spider sense literally warns him about all danger before it happens. So he's like feeling that double effect. That's why he didn't just go instantly. So the, yeah, the other people were just like, peace. But he's he like, was yeah, like, they I don't want to die. Second. I don't want to die. Yeah, he had time to actually be like, Call something's sense. happening. My body's trying to get me to react to it. And there's <laughs> nothing to react to. And I just feel wrong. And then realizing Damn. he's dying because he's 15 years old. And I'm going to cry again because I, like, I been, can't. I would have been more sad if it was Toby personally. Fuck off. Toby could not have <laughs> acted that. Toby could not have acted. Toby couldn't. This is Co Toby sad in, I, like, what was it? Spider-Man 3? True. He was just that ugly crying. <laughs> this was like. Straight ugly cries, oh dude. Oh, my God. This was, like, just heartbreaking. And, like, at the end, the last thing he says is. So to the very end, he's like, I let you down. Yeah, like he thought he fucked up. Oh, and he didn't. He was the only, he was literally the last person who had his hand on that. Cause he, that's why he, <clears throat> last person with his hand on that gauntlet. And if he had just been in his mind, if he had just been like two seconds faster getting it off, but it wasn't his fault. It was, no, it was fault. his fault. He should have grabbed. Wait, why is it Star Lord's fault? Okay, they literally had it off, and then Star Lord realizes what happened to Gamora, and it starts hitting him, which bre out. breaks Mantis's yeah, project. That. I forgot that. Literally, forgot yeah, my favorite that. um but Infinity they, War he killed his girl, the... bro. I know, but then you then you know what you do? You rip the fucking gauntlet off. Why did you start Thanos taunting him before fault. getting the gauntlet off his hand? Thanos' fault, technically, because oh, yeah, well, he killed honest, Star yeah. Lord's girl. Yeah, AKA I get it, but that's like, but when he's but that's the thing when Star Lord starts to antagonize him, he doesn't know dead he's like ha you lost big guy like don't start gloating about lo yeah. somebody losing but you get the fucking gauntlet off their hand it does have a little and attitude love Star problem Lord. and that's how it goes but my thing is is that that's the way it had to play out because dr strange was like i watched 14 million 605 different scenarios if you just nailed that you number you're a it's god close. it's actually <laughs> close i know it's close um but it was like and he saw one scenario that they won and i'm pretty sure that that that's when 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 he gets to the point where he's about to kill tony and then he just gives him the stone like with no fight he's just like take it and then they're like why would you do that and it's like we're in the end game now and it's like this is the only and then even as he's disappearing he says this was the only way so and when he says like, like this is the only way does he know he that knows in the future they're gonna be able to get maybe get some of them back yeah, or my thing is all. that he at least sees that Tony is important or that Tony is one of the <clears throat> deciding factors and whether or not they beat him. So he knew he had to keep him alive because they very they establish it on the ship that he says, if I have to let you die or the kid die or lose the stone, I'm protecting the stone. And then right. suddenly it's like, no fight. Don't kill him. Take the stone just immediately. Yeah, he like gave it up so quick. So I was exactly, like, he knows because some it was shit. like Tony needs to stay alive. Yeah. In the comic books, is actually they use Nebula. Actually, Nebula to getting who, um things. who is Nebula? The fucking blue chick that I hate. Gamora's sister. Ah, oh, the robot one. Yeah. I don't like her. Me neither. She's but got a nasty, fucking... like resting bitch she, face. But she's somehow less annoying. She's like she's dumb in the comics. Like they have to, they trick her in the comics to like getting. Either way, so I feel like her and Tony are gonna do something to save the day. But I think Tony's very important, and that's why. Strange just gives up the stone immediately, being like, "It's all about the end game now." And then, all, then they're like, "Oh, it's the end game on Earth," but it's like, "No, it's like the end game, end game." Like, like all this stuff for real, for real. Yeah, like all this stuff has to happen, and then we can we can get it on the rebound. You so know? now, like after the end credits, which by the way, I've never been in a theater where literally maybe only two people got up and left before the credits mm -hmm. were done, and I'm pretty sure it was because they had little kids. Yeah. Um, who just wanted to get out of there or they're yeah, crying sense, or whatever. Yeah. So Samuel L and I don't know her name because I haven't seen the other movies. Uh um Kobe Smulders. Yes. Maria Hill, Nicholas Fury. Yes. Yeah. I knew it was Nick Fury, but that's all I knew. Yeah, she's Agent Maria Hill. Yeah. So they both pass, but right yeah. on his page or as it falls down, they're paging a symbol that I did not know at the time, Captain but you Marvel. explained to me. Yes. Captain Marvel. Yeah, Who the fuck the is movies. that? And is that so? Did we already know that Captain Marvel was coming out before this? Yeah, we did. They had already because they had already announced that like um, Brie Larson was cast as Captain Marvel. Some of the set picks have just recently leaked and stuff. Like they, we knew it was coming out the same way we know Ant Man and the Wasp was coming out in July. Fuck Ant Man. I like Ant Man and I like Luis, but is he for little kids? 
No, he's funny. It's the okay. You have to watch it because it's more of a comedy. Like he's his sidekick guy, who's not really like a superhero sidekick. The way they tell stories with just that one character is like so hilarious. Like he is the like just just take a little look at Ant Man. Like it's like a thing where the guy leaves prison and he gets picked up by this guy and he's like, "Oh, how are you doing?" It's like, "Oh, not bad." You know, um, my my mom got deported, and uh, <laughs> my dad died. I got the van though. <laughs> it's just like he's just a funny guy and he's just a big smile on his face the entire time so he's funny so i but i'm not that excited for ant-man and the wasp and i think it's because there's no way that like when you're coming off this movie going into that one is kind of hard yeah like is ant-man really gonna have be able like is that movie gonna be able to set up anything for the next avengers or um i think that technically chronologically Ant-Man wasn't even that- in the shit that's what I mean, because they, they explain that Ant-Man and Hawkeye aren't there because in Civil War, they're on Captain America's side. So in order to stay with their families, they have to take some kind of deal and go into like weird protective custody so they can't be in, involved. That's what they say. But with Ant-Man specifically, they said they with the trailers, this isn't even spoilers. This is just the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, <clears throat> they have to like basically kind of go on the run because of what he did in Civil War. So. Damn, Ant-Man did some crazy shit. Well, it's it's kind of hard to explain. Okay, you know how like in the in in this Avengers movie, Tony want to call Captain America, and he was like, "We broke up. Like we don't talk." It's because something happens that they all choose sides, and Captain America is technically on the fugitive side. So anybody who sides with Captain America, that's why when they get to that room with Rhodey and like the governors like arrest them, and he doesn't, like they're yeah. all fugitives. I Every didn't know what was happening at that point. I was like, okay, they must yeah, have did something because they're, they're all enemies of the state because of like shit that they had done. Okay, serious question, noob question. Mm-hmm. What the fuck does Ant Man do? Why is he a superhero? Ant Man. I can't get over a- like the corniness of Ant Man. Sorry. I know. Well, it's basically um, there's like been two. The original one's Hank Pym, and the one that's currently is Scott Lang. Um, and he's a Scott Lang's a thief, so he ends up in the first movie breaking into the original Ant Man's house, couldn't find anything, steals this suit, but it's because like they orchestrated it basically. But the suit is you ha- you hit buttons and you get really small and you can sneak in places but you keep your mask so like you can still punch people at ant-man size and it feels like a 200 pound man hitting you time kind of they just can't see it coming and then he has the reverse where he can get himself really big so he can make himself massive which he does in civil war so he's like he's a pretty funny guy like it's like dr strange takes more of like a weird trippy Vibe yeah, I like, I like Doctor Strange. I want to go see or yeah, go, go watch his movie. See, yeah, it's on Netflix. It should be. And then it Ant is? Man is like a comedy. Yeah, Ant Man's, but not like a cheesy comedy. It's like a comedy because they do all this cool stuff with like the perspective where it seems like there's a super intense battle happening, <clears> but then it's then it cuts, it flashes out, and it's just them like fighting on like a kid's train set or something. Yeah. So it's like really funny, but then it seems really intense when it's it's you know they do cool stuff like that. What else was that like? Like Bugs Life or something like that? Bugs Life were already all bugs. <laughs> no, I know, but like I swear there's oh, like a zoom out yeah, part yeah, yeah, where there they're is, like, yeah. oh shit. Like, ah! Yeah. It's like, look and it's like nothing. <laughs> yeah. That was hella yeah. funny when I was Exactly. It's like that. You know, it takes advantage of stuff like that in a pretty good way worth so, watching. So basically the Ant-Man movie's coming out and then Captain Marvel's coming out and then the next year after that there's another Avengers movie. So do yeah, you no, think, so it's basically like, yeah, so next July, two... Ant-Man, January, Captain Marvel, May Cap is Avengers. So like in those because I don't really watch like the single superhero movies, like the singular yeah. ones. So are they gonna really cover this or is it gonna be like their own thing? Captain Marvel think- will be more an introduction to her. And then she'll Wait, be Captain ready to get... Marvel's a chick? Yeah. What do you think? I told you. You asked who she was, and I said, this it's Brie Well, Larson. yeah, but I thought you were like, Brie Larson's going to be in the movie. I thought maybe, like, as Captain Marvel. No, like, she's Captain Marvel. It's a chick. I thought female. That's why I said you'd like it. I thought females, like, can't be captains. No, they can. She's Isn't captain. there another word for it? Well, it's because she's like, that's, I'm a, being... that's her name. Don't it. Ex- that's her name. Don't it. Wait, her name is Captain? <laughs> no, her name is not Captain. I would no, call her Captain. That's just her Hold superhero on. name. What's her name? She's like Captain Brie... Marvel. No, Brie Larson. Oh, Brie Larson. Brie Larson. She's like she's Envy Adams and Scott Pilgrim. She's one John. She's in some other movie with Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, she looks like a badass. Yeah, she's yeah she's gonna. Yeah, be here awesome, she is so. all dressed up as Captain. Yeah, Marvel. basically, what happens to her Bro, is she gets like her DNA this changes gets... everything. I told you you'd like it. 
Yo, can they ever yeah, so fight Wonder Woman? I need to see it. No, they can't. Why Wonder not? Woman. Because it's different companies. Marvel does not want DC tarnishing them right now. DC would be lucky if Marvel wanted to do that because they suck know. right now and they, they know do. it. Dude, they're about to turn yeah. it around though. Okay, I'm telling you, Wonder Woman, Batman, they're going to make some shit happen. They're going to bring back uh, someone else and... They're uh, gonna monopolize the dark superhero movie genre. Not because they've already again. given up on it. They tried to sh throw a bunch of jokes and Justice League because they really they were doing wasn't working for them. And that didn't wait. Work so for them what either. was before Justice League? That was like a group that was like dark Suicide Squad, but wasn't dark. Batman vs Superman Darf. would have been the only darkish group-ish one. There was nothing dark other than Suicide Squad, but that was comedy. Suicide Squad looked pretty comedy. bad. I never even saw it. Like I'm it a, was not as bad as I thought it was. I was a be. fan of DC <laughs> movies, but I still have no interest in like that. It there looked, you go. I heard it was terrible. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was not great. Was I heard that Jared time. Leto, Leto, I'm not sure how to say it, was really Leto. upset in the final version. He should um, they should have just gone with a completely different direction in that movie. The joke been the bad guy. He wasn't. So. Shaking my mullet. Yeah. But either way, Marvel. Exciting. I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually genuinely excited because I've never got into the movie. And now, like, I want to go watch. Like, I think there's, like, three or four of them that I want to go watch. And then maybe go watch the new one again so that I, like, yep. I still don't know who Vision's boo thing was. But I need to know oh, more about Oh, that's Scarlet her. Witch. She's she only is she's my in, wife. We are going to get that's married. A, everybody. That's the Olsen twins' other sister. That's the Olsen twins' sister. Bro, my oh, dumb ass. Who did I tell? I thought she was Maggie Gyllenhaal for some reason. Maggie Gyllenhaal is like. Yeah, I know. After Googling, yeah. I was like, that doesn't Kate, look anything like her. But like during <laughs> no. the movie, I was like, is that Maggie? Wait, who's there's a third Olsen sister? Yeah, she's like, What's she's your age. Ma uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth. Who is now the best looking Olsen. Hands down. Dude, this is gonna sound really crazy, but no bullshit. I had a dream last night about was Mary Kate and Ashley. Continue? No, I had a dream <laughs> after that dream. Because I, I fall asleep and wake up a lot. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, like I'll be fair, tweeting at fair. weird times. Yeah. Yeah, she could ruin my whole life. There you go. Like, leave me. She Have you seen Wave River? No. You should definitely watch it. It's a great movie. She's in it, too. Leave me... Yeah. But she's actually, um, she's actually. No way, like, she's their sister. She is. 100. How do you not see it? It's really obvious. I don't see it. It's all in the eyes. Look in the eyes and the shape face. Damn. It's just now the Olsen she's twins have gone like kind of weird. No, she's the same age as you. I mean, technically, yeah, but she's technically older than me by a few months. By like a couple months. Yeah, there you go. But uh, yeah, she's technically an X Men, but they can't call. Yo, did you see the, the that was like a troll thing, right? It was like a X Men yeah, slash over that the Avengers. Been, thing. That's been floating around. How come for they years. don't do that shit though? They can't because they don't own X Men yet. They've currently yeah, they're not in deals. yet. They fucking own everything talks. soon. No, they're in talks to buy literally all of Fox, but it might not be legal, so the deal hasn't completely gone through yet. So Fox can still make as many X Men movies as they want. True. So it's like because it, honestly, it would give Disney like a massive monopoly. They would literally pretty much own everything. What do you mean for would give Disney? They already own fucking everything. Yeah, but imagine if they also owned all of Fox. It's not like them being like, let's borrow Spider-Man from Sony. This is like, we're not just buying the X-Men back from Fox. We're buying all of 21st Century Fox. Yeah, that would be a... That's a lot. A big D plane. Exactly. So that might it might not actually be legal. So as far as I know, it hasn't completely gone through yet. Elizabeth Olsen slams revealing Avengers costume. I would like to cover up a bit. Girl, slay. slay. Stick up for yourself. It's uh, it's cool, though. This Girls movie, look, I noticed okay. that... Um, this is, no, I'm about to go on a totally unrelated tangent. I can't. Is it just girls wearing costumes that aren't... No, like, girls look better in clothes, right? To me. Yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. If I had an option, especially of seeing a celebrity mm -hmm. in nice outfit versus naked... I'm going to choose nice, nice outfit because yeah, this totally. leaves more to the imagination. Word. Right? Word. Am I crazy, though? No, you're not Because most people crazy. are like, show me your boobs. No, you're not crazy. I mean, I am. Yeah. Um, she is supposed to have, like, a really not at all attractive, bad Russian accent for the most part because of the country her character is supposed to be from. And then I noticed in this movie, it's, like, not at all present in the <laughs> beginning. Like, first couple scenes, I was like, dude, did they, did they let her get rid of the did accent? Did they forget? 
No, I'm like, did they let her get rid of it? Because sometimes they'll do that. But then like later in the movie, she'd, it would pop out a little bit sometimes. And it'd be like, there's that fucking accent. And then would go away again for a little bit. And it's like, I feel like they filmed the very first scenes of the movie at the end. And they were like, whatever. Just fuck it. Because I'm cool. If they want to do the thing, like there's that episode, I hate Ross, but there's that episode where he decides <clears> he's going <throat> to speak in a British accent in front of his class. And then he has to work on phasing it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, is it like that? Are they letting her phase out the accent? Has she been in Western culture long enough that she just doesn't have to have the accent anymore for like two years? Yeah, that's strange. I wonder. Because there, honestly, there's nothing, there's very few accents that are least or less attractive than like white, like people from, people trying to use fake Russian accents. Yeah, I can't do it. I sound like, like a literal idiot. It, yeah, it's just I mean, weird. I sound because, like, like an idiot people speaking accent, Russian, but... People speaking Russian sounds nice. Yeah. But people speaking English with a Russian, Russian accent does not. Yeah, I agree. So, and I'm sure if I spoke Russian with my accent, it would not speak sound nice either. Yeah. So no so, hate. I'm just saying that it's like, I, I watched that like Red Sparrow movie with Jennifer. Like, oh, I need to watch that still. No, you don't. That's my girl. Yeah, but yeah, it's that's, worth watching. That's my girl. It, once it hits the Netflix. Is it going on Netflix? Netflix Maybe does eventually. not have many movies anymore. Uh, because a lot of people, a lot of these studios are realizing how well Netflix is doing, and they're just making their own streaming. So that's why Netflix is pushing their own like independent content. So that it's like, if you want Netflix, if you want Stranger Things, gotta have Netflix. Yeah. If you want Lost in Space, gotta have Netflix. If you want Mindhunter, gotta have Netflix. If you want all these other Netflix exclu Netflix exclusives, like they're really trying to push their own branding, which I'm totally fine with because usually it just notch. makes better. I mean, look at HBO. Like, yeah, to, exactly. It's a model that works. Yeah. Um, I am about to pee my pants. Yeah, that's So fine. is there anything else you want to say about the Avengers that's very spoilery? No, I don't think so. You were, you wanted to know why Thanos was just like that one guy. Oh, that's yeah. just because he decided he, going, he just, he wanted to be that guy. He wants but, to be a god. But like, what is, so I thought it was deeper than that. Like, I thought that he wanted to destroy half of humanity what? so that he could resource and rebuild properly no it's like literally one of these things that you kill half humanity <clears throat> that immediately makes double the resources for whoever's left like but Earth, why is Earth it is probably going to have a what, water crisis if he was a if god you, why wouldn't he he want to choose not who gets to be alive no that's why that's why it's random because to him it being random it's not is random like, though because he could create his own reality with the fucking reality stone yeah but he can but when he when he snaps it's just that's what okay so like when they're on the gamora's planet they actually say pick a pick a side if you hear what's happening in the background while he's pulling her away they literally say pick a side one side will be spared one side will have a glory will have an end more glorious than they could possibly imagine or something will be used for a purpose more like bigger than they could possibly imagine those that side is the side that gets killed they get to pick themselves. Yeah. It's not like people are like, you go here, you go here. And he's not going to injure people and kill them. He's literally just wiping half people from existence completely randomly. So it's like literally just pulling the population. It's just decimate. It's like a natural disaster. It's just decimating half the population in an area. But it's just on a literally universal scale. So it's like half the people on this planet know. gone. Half How the hell is Captain Marvel, the new chick on the block, going to have any fucking just to work with she can Iron tie Man Earth and to space? She can tie Earth to space because what happens to her, she gets to do an accident that blends her DNA with alien DNA. And that's how she gets the powers. <gasps> oh, I like her. I want an yeah, alien so that, girl. That, in my opinion, that's going to help bridge how like the people on Earth and the space stuff. Because for all the technology Earth has, they don't have a lot of ways to get to space and do stuff in space what do you mean that's, the guardians that, are the well, motherfucking why, shits yeah the guardians they got are, rid of them the huh? guardians literally are just on earth now this is the first time they've been on earth so aliens can come from outside to earth but earth doesn't have anything yet that gets them think about it when when tony says this is a one-way trip to spider-man it's not like oh no like we're gonna get up <clears throat> pepper's gonna realize where we are and send the the iron spaceship to come get us yeah it's like we screwed. don't know how we're getting back. So, like, when Thor gets around, he uses the Bifrost, which is, like, something that's on his planet. He can't just, well, the, uh, yeah, that doesn't work anymore either. But basically, if you're already in space, you can get to Earth. But if you're on Earth, there's really not that many ways to get to space. Damn. Like, that far Unless into space, Unless you're Captain obviously. Marvel. That's where I think they're going to bridge it. That's where I think they're gonna. So Captain Marvel's chilling bridge. on Earth right now, or where is she at? I guess she's gonna watch her movie. She huh? should be on Earth. Like so I don't know what they're happens, gonna do with the story. Whatever happens in her movie is gonna lay the foundation for the next Avengers. 
No, or honestly, it'll be like an origin Avengers, story. Like the Avengers is basically kind of like a part one with a cliffhanger that goes into a part two, even though they're kind of their own self-contained movies. I don't know if Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel is probably going to have to be an origin story. And then maybe the end of it is when she gets like the, like, my hey, we need help. Yeah, they're going to have to touch on like, how does Nick Fury, like, how did Nick Fury find Captain Marvel? Why are they working yeah, together? Why like, did he think to call fuck? her? And then I think she, because that's the introduction she needs to get into Avengers. They try to make the Avengers movies. So that if you only ever watch Avengers movies, you should be able to mostly understand what's happening. I mean, this is yeah, I literally pretty, they really nicely laid it you out were, from a dumbass. You were good because you had seen Guardians and Guardians talks about Thanos and the stone. True, yeah. So that's the most important, one of the most important ones I find. I um, feel like but, even even without fully knowing or seeing the movies, they explain the stones really well, though. They were like, this they do, one and does this openings, and this and this. Yeah, they do a good job with it. And they try to explain them to some extent every time they show up so that if you just happen to see one movie one-off, you'll understand once it gets to this one. This was the first one that, like, yeah, seeing all the movies is really going to help your understanding of this, unfortunately. But as I'm seeing with a lot of people, you can understand it whether or not you've been been to those movies it's i just, just think good the emotional the man. emotional impact is going to be bigger if you've been invested like true. i have for literally 10 years yeah true yeah I, I mean i wasn't sad i was more just like yo how the fuck oh, are I they bawled. gonna get out of this i bawled i was fine and then groot and i was like oh, god Did you groot? and then it was peter and i was like groot deserved oh, better groot deserved better groot's been done dirty too many times for real he gets the <laughs> shaft repeatedly <laughs> Poor little yeah. guy. All yeah, right, I'm literally about guy. to pee my pants. Okay. Good time. This is our longest podcast to date, I believe. Yeah, it really is. Might have the live one we did might have been longer. Should oh, we yeah, do a live like one two. next week? I'm down. I'm down too. Totally down. Totally All right, down. we're tentatively down for a live episode on. Can we do Monday or either or you whichever? Wanted to do Tuesday, huh? Tuesday or Monday? I think I'm whichever down to do prefer. Tuesdays. Which I know would work better for you, but for a live one, I'd like to do Monday. Do it just it. depends on the schedule. It, yeah, that's fine. I'm fine with that. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys, everyone, so much for watching. You can listen to... Shit, yeah, I should have said this at the beginning. You can listen to us on iTunes or SoundCloud or on this mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all so much for watching or listening. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, Twitter, Twitch. All that stuff is down in the description. Amanda the Jedi oh, is... Her uh, social media branding across pretty much everything. So if you want to add her on anything, it's Amanda the Jedi. Her Please links are also down words. in the description. Yes. Uh, yeah, love y'all. Have a nice life. Thanks for listening. I'm going to pee my pants now. Goodbye. Okay,